I entrust everything to you. Trust me, I really adopted your ideas and someday we will definitely do it. Is it really a bandage, the first thought that arose in my head? What a headache, and the same question arose, where am I? Seeing his reflection, the guy asked what was going on here, and who it was. It was hard to believe, but before he was just an ordinary office worker, and a few days after waking up, some things became clear. The guy realized that he had reincarnated into another world. Rebirth took place in Samuel, a nine-year-old boy, the eldest son of Baron Rienbach, who owned a small estate in the countryside. My thoughts were confused. A lot of questions haunted me. How did this even happen? After all, in that world, he just returned home, drank whiskey, and then, without even eating or taking a shower, he immediately jumped into bed, hoping to rest after a tiring day. But what happened remained the main mystery of what happened. Reincarnation is often associated with death. And it turns out he died since this happened. But it's hard to believe, what is the reason for the death then? The guy now understood for himself what reincarnation means. But above all, he remembers his past life, although his memories of Sam's life are very vague. But nevertheless, the first problem that he had to face in this world was his younger brother, or rather of course supposedly brother Mannion, who is a year younger. Apparently, this brother beat him during sword training, acting meanly. And this stress caused the awakening of memory. Perhaps Sam's personality died then. Although you shouldn't think about it, it's better to understand what to do next. As far as it became clear, he has no talent for fencing. But the Rienbach family itself seems to have become famous thanks to the sword and according to the words of the current head of the family. He constantly repeated that you need to know how to use a sword. It also became known that Sam's biological mother had died, and his father's mistress Yolanda became his only legal wife. After delving into other people's memories, the guy realized that Sam wasn't nice to her at all. And in general, how much this little boy has gone through in his short life. As a result, Sam was removed as the next head of the family, and his younger brother Mannion became the new successor. It became clear that now he could not do whatever he wanted with this young body, but nevertheless, we cannot sit idly by. Until now, in his former life, he was just a cog in a huge mechanism, unable to become something more. And with this body, and in this world, there is a chance, and he can improve. And with such opportunities, he will definitely become better than he was before. The careful knock of the servant distracted him from deep thoughts and the elderly man apologizing said that he had to disturb the young master and inform him that his food was ready. Sam thanked Derek and promised to come right away. After all, he was really hungry. In addition to Sam, the butler Derek and the maid Daphne live in the house. Sam wished good morning to the spectacular Daphne and she smiled and responded in kind. According to the father, a man who does not know how to wield a sword has no right to sit at the table with his family although Sam was even happy about this deprivation. He only felt sorry for the two servants who were so kind to him. After all, it was only thanks to them that Sam was not left alone after losing his mother. Daphne said that she had brought what the young master had asked for and laid out an impressive book on the table. Sam was surprised by such a present and thanked the maid. Sam realized that since he did not have the gift of wielding a sword, he would now use magic. And if it really exists, then it would be stupid not to use it. Sam heard upset servants crying and sniffling. He asked them not to cry or be upset. And Derek replied that the young gentleman is very good and wherever his father looks. Daphne promised that everything would be okay, they would both always be by Sam's side. After all, they swore to take care of the young master on behalf of his late mother. Sam replied that he was truly touched by their concern and that it greatly calmed him down. After delving into the guy's memories, it became clear that Sam's mother was a maid here, and in the past they were all good comrades. New Sam was surprised by this discovery, because he did not at all expect that his mother was a maid. Daphne asked to take a minute and listen to her words. The caring maid said that even Sam would not have a talent for magic, he still should not give up. The guy was chilled by such sincere words, and he replied that he was grateful to Daphne for her concern about him. Having finished the meal, Sam said that he would be upstairs, and the servants reminded that they could be called if you needed anything. Having reached his room, new Sam decided to start reading and learning the origins of magic. He decided that since he was already in another world, he should now try to do everything in his power. Having spent more than one candle, Sam found out that to use magic, you need a sufficient amount of it in the body, and all this was possible from the mass of pages read. It was also learned that only a few can become wizards, even if they know how to use magic. After all, according to the book, just by reading the spell, you can determine whether you have abilities within you or not. And such a moment is very exciting. Deciding not to be afraid of something new in life and trying to calm down, Sam decided to start with a basic spell. 
Trying to concentrate as much as possible, Sam said, the fire was lit. What happened next left Sam speechless, as a huge flame burst out of Sam's hands. The guy tried to somehow calm the flames, but it was more difficult than creating it. Daphne, sensing the smell of burning, reacted with lightning speed and rushed to the young master. Finding a frightened guy in his room, the maid asked if he was in pain. And after she saw the consequences of the influence of fire, she asked Sam to explain. After listening to Sam's version of events, Daphne understood what had happened. She explained that Sam just couldn't control the amount of magic, and that's how it usually happens. Sam admitted that he just said it, the fire was lit, and then everything happened. Daphne said that this may indicate that the young master has magical powers. Sam immediately began to beg the maid not to tell his father about all this. Daphne asked why Sam wanted this so much. After all, it may be that such a discovery could change the father's relationship with Sam. But the guy confirmed his decision. Daphne agreed to fulfill Sam's request, but on one condition. That he would no longer do anything dangerous, especially in his room. Sam was embarrassed and feeling guilty for Daphne's experiences and promised not to repeat the fire trick. The maid explained that she was not at all against practicing magic, but they cannot allow a fire to happen in their house. And for such dangerous experiments, Sam needs to find a secluded place. Sam said that he wanted to ask Derek for help, because if he was there, then there was no need to be afraid of anything, and it's better not to do such things alone. Daphne asked while hugging Sam so he wouldn't bother her too much. After all, she really worries about him. Sam remembered that for her, he was still just a child, her feminine anxiety was quite natural. Sam, returning the hug, said that he promised not to do anything dangerous again so as not to worry Daphne. The maid looked into Sam's eyes and congratulated him on becoming a wizard. Daphne admitted that she was very happy about Sam, and the guy, embarrassed by such concern, replied with a brief thank you. Sam went to the forest nearby with the thought that fire magic should not be used. As soon as a good place was found, Sam decided to try magic and remembered that there are several types of magic, protection magic and support magic. He decided to try strengthening his body with magic this time. After all, if this succeeds, then the likelihood that he will be beaten until he loses his pulse will be less. Forming a clot of magic in his hand, Sam exclaimed, let's go. He asked the magic that filled his body to give him strength with the power of thought. An unusual feeling appeared, the body became much lighter, and Sam decided to jump from the hill. The result was excellent, Sam felt a surge of energy and strength. He thought it was better to fight with his hands rather than with swords. Then, inspired by the results, Sam decided to try jumping again and practice hitting the tree. Sam, screaming furiously, alarmed all the birds in the forest, causing a flock of them to fall from the trees and fly away. With several strong blows, the guy managed to demolish a small tree, as if with an axe, and it collapsed with a loud crash. Sam, looking at his hand, was surprised that he did not feel pain at all, and decided that this was probably due to the strengthening of the body. He thought that he did not even expect to find the talent of magic in himself, but is it enough to fight? Although it's hard to believe that such a power might not work during a fight, Sam stated that with her he could become an adventurer. And this will be his first step towards becoming in this world, only one question remains, how long will he be able to stay in this house? After all, it's obvious that they don't really want to see him in it. His father is not interested in him because he does not know how to use a sword. The stepmother is not so brave as to say in person that he must die for her good. And little brother, he speaks for himself even without much explanation. With all his appearance. The only thing that worries him at this moment is that his faithful servants are happy. After all, without them, it would be much more difficult and lonely. The guy wondered if there was any point in thinking about these things at all because he had to become stronger no matter what, or rather in spite of everything. Suddenly, I was distracted from my thoughts by a terrifying roar that came from the depths of the forest. Sam turned around and couldn't believe his eyes because he was being chased by a bear of incredible size. The choice turned out to be obvious, the guy simply ran away, screaming in horror. After all, it was clear that he could not cope with such a formidable beast even with the help of his magic. Picking up a sprint speed, Sam only wondered where he had gotten out of. And how could he run faster to be sure to get away from the shaggy bear? because there was no self-confidence at all. Many indeed moved along the ground with incredible speed, but the fear was so great that it seemed that the bear was about to overtake him and grab him with its huge paws. After running for who knows how long, it occurred to Sam whether he was really running away, and whether this was the hero's path. Sam is trying to collect his thoughts in a critical situation. He wondered if he wasn't going to be a better person just a few minutes ago. So why does he then run away without doing anything else? And anyway, what will he do after he runs away? 
He will simply return home and cry that a huge bear scared him, but he could not resist it. This seems stupid to the representative of another world because he did not go through reincarnation to remain a scared little boy. Sam stopped and turned to face the beast and firmly told himself no. He convinced himself that he could not retreat and remembered that he had been practicing magic not so long ago. And how can you retreat after this and not even try to use it for your protection? Sam screamed furiously, gathering all his power into his fist. His cry calling for the bear spread far beyond the forest and the beast accepted his call, picking up speed to attack. There was nothing to do and the guy met the huge carcass with a magic fist. The blow and the blinding flash struck not only the enraged bear but also surprised the young magician. The effect was amazing. Sam did not even expect such a result because the bear flew far to the side and was deeply knocked out. A surge of joy dispersed the young blood and added new impressions to the guy. Sam wondered if he had really won and looked at the broken tree again and realized that the cut was sharper than before. Having calmed down a little and taken a breath, he thought about whether it was possible to develop physically without any restrictions and how to achieve this in such conditions. Examining his hand again, Sam did not notice anything special and decided that perhaps some other magic had worked. Although in reality this is not so important and the main thing is that he won his first battle. Looking up at the sky and clenching his fist with all his might Sam, full of joy and enthusiasm, said that he had done it, he had defeated the monster. And with such power, he will be able to travel around the world and live as a free man. Feeling a surge of strength from thoughts about his future life, Sam realized that he had found his path, which he must follow no matter what. Returning from the forest, Sam would not be empty-handed. He was dragging two huge bears towards the guild. When he got there, he thought that was all. Suddenly a female voice called him. A nice girl named Melia said he was great today. Sam says that there are three more bears in the forest and we need to continue working. The girl replied that you can rely on her, and she praised the guy for his hard work. Sam in turn also said thank you, and he reminded him that the guild helped him a lot. But Melia did not agree with him because everything was the other way around. She recalled that Sam had been killing wild bears every day for a year. Therefore, I myself should thank him for such a wonderful result. Sam answered, has it really been a whole year already and Melia said that this is exactly so. The girl said that he couldn't even imagine what it was like for her when she saw an ordinary boy dragging a wild bear along with him and a maid. And then Sam said that he wanted to join the adventurer's guild. But at that moment all the guild workers were against it. Bed Sam was only nine years old and everyone still knew that he was the son of a local lord. The guy for the inconvenience caused and laughed. Melia admitted that at that moment she did not even suspect what he would be capable of. And now, thanks to him, peace reigns in this city. Melia promised to work hard today to defeat the bear carcasses. Sam said he has confidence in her abilities, and he reminded that they would share the income as usual. As usual, it meant that some would go to Sam, and some would go to an orphanage. Sam remembered the little inhabitants of the orphanage, how they thanked him for the opportunity to have good nutrition. Sam was happy for them, and he was glad to help them, because life had already treated them hard. At first he carried out receiving with the aim of earning money for himself. But the forest is a dangerous place because it is inhabited by wild bears and therefore the inhabitants could not eat much meat, and then Sam decided to distribute meat to city residents and orphanages. This has made his reputation unrivaled compared to a year ago. But there was a problem that remained unresolved. After all, Sam still couldn't become the next head of the family. His younger brother Mannion was supposed to be next, which the city residents didn't quite like. Of course he was excellent with a sword, but his character inspired fear in everyone who knew him. Secretly, people of course discussed it and were not very happy about this prospect. Sam understood the situation perfectly well. He tried not to think about all this because he worked hard to become an adventurer. Sam, thinking about the future, said that he still had five years left before adulthood, and he needs to quickly become independent because he will sincerely say goodbye to this house forever. Returning to his home, Sam called Daphne, and the faithful maid immediately responded to his voice. Sam put a rather large bag of coins on the table and said that it was for her for today. Daphne thanked the young master for his generosity. And Sam reminded that Daphne has always been kind to him and he appreciates it. The maid admitted that she always wondered what would happen in the future. And now little Sam has become a great adventurer, which surprised everyone. Sam asked that he was really so amazed by everything. Daphne replied that this was indeed true because he was only 10, but in strength he was already comparable to an adult and she would really like Mr. Pamay Mannion to have a little success with Sam. Sam just laughed in response to such a stupid request, which embarrassed Daphne. 
Derek said that he had finally found the young master. Sam asked what happened. The faithful butler explained that his father, the owner of the estate, wanted to see him. Sam was not at all happy about the news because his father had been ignoring him all this time. Derek agreed with the guy's words but explained that he was just conveying a message. Sam said it all sounded like something not very good was in store for him. Derek apologized and said that unfortunately it was so. Sam replied that he understood everything and must prepare for this difficult visit. Derek understood everything that was going on in the young master's head and after thinking a little said that he and Daphne as his servants would always be on his side. Sam thanked them for their loyalty and said that he would never forget their kindness. Plucking up courage, Sam went to his father, whom he found in his office. The father, as always, said in a dissatisfied voice whether Samuel had really decided to appear. Sam wondered what had happened that his father, Carius Rienbach, needed him. After all, if he is not mistaken, then for the first time he hears his father's voice since his appearance in this world. The father silently continued to look at his son, and Sam decided to take the initiative and asked what happened. Carius said that Sam has changed a lot and no longer looks like the child he recognized. The father said that he had something to tell and it was a very important matter. Carius explained that he did not want to go into unnecessary details and that Sam simply needed to know that Mannion would officially become his successor. Sam thought that this of course was not news to him and did not fall of any kind. He simply replied that everything was clear to him. The father asked if this was all the reaction Sam was capable of. The guy thought what he expected and replied that he had nothing more to say. Sam thought that apparently his father expected to see his grief or even tears of despair. How predictable this man Carius Rienbach turned out to be, Sam suddenly realized and was glad to himself that he had not satisfied his father's desire. The father reported that he had been invited to a party at Viscount de Riddles to welcome his new successor. Sam only replied that he understood everything. Carius, increasingly angry, declared that Sam was his eldest son, but he had no talent with a sword and therefore would never be his heir. Sam decided that all this was very funny and answered, without hiding his smile, that he understood everything perfectly. The father asked in a surprised voice how this could happen. Sam thought that he himself did not want to be the successor of such a person. He stated that he was not worthy of family members, but his younger brother is a very talented and smart son. The servants and all the townspeople love him. Therefore, the father is absolutely right. Carius, clearly not expecting such an answer, was confused and said that it was so. The father asked if Sam really went on an adventure because they told him about it. Sam replied that it was true and he was ashamed to call, but he had no talent for anything else. Sam promised that when he became an adult, he would leave his home to become an adventurer and not block the path of his younger brother. And that is why he is now carrying out orders for the guild and collecting medicinal plants. The father, having fallen into thought, replied that he understood everything. Sam thought that it was enough to talk to him like a real father and son, because this was very stupid. Sam decided that it was time to leave, he told his father, since he was no longer needed, then it was time for him to go on business. The father did not have time to answer anything, and Sam left, slamming the door. Sam wondered if he could stand in this place for another five years, because it was a complete nightmare to feel like that. The pleased younger brother Mannion immediately appeared and asked if Sam had heard the latest news from his father. Sam replied that he already knew everything and congratulated his younger brother on officially receiving the status of heir, also wishing him good luck in the future. Mannion, clearly not expecting such a reaction from his older brother, asked what was wrong with him. Sam said that everything was fine and he was just happy to congratulate his beloved brother on such success. Mannion yelled that there was no need to joke with him and Sam himself is arrogant only because his servants support him. The younger brother became hysterical from Sam's indifference and completely lost his temper. Sam decided that his brother didn't want to see a completely different reaction from him, and that's why he got furious. Sam, not wanting to watch his brother's tantrums anymore, said that if that's all, then he needs to go. Mannion demanded Sam stop and yelled that he was the next head of the family. He demanded that Sam not act so arrogantly towards him. Sam, thinking what a Cretan Mannion was, managed to notice his scent with a wooden sword. Sam reacted instantly and was able to stop the blow with his hand using magic. Mannion ground his teeth in anger and realized that this time he could not win. Sam said that his younger brother either accuses him of something or tries to beat him, and is this really how a worthy successor to his father should behave? Mannion yelled for Sam to shut up immediately and let go of his stick. Sam thought how funny his brother, this vaunted sword genius, looked now. Just a pathetic wretch, not a warrior. Sam said that he would definitely let go and threw the stick so that the younger brother flew away. 
Sam apologized for his actions and offered to help his brother, but the little bastard demanded not to touch him or touch him. Mannion began to yell that he didn't need help from someone like Sam and demanded that his mansion be cleaned out as well. Mannion hissed with anger and said that his father wanted to keep Sam despite his worthlessness. But he himself is not so kind and stupid, so Sam should get away from home. Sam replied that his younger brother was probably right, and that's why he would leave tomorrow. But after thinking a little, he added that it was better to leave right now because it would be better for everyone. Mannion demanded to wait, but Sam did not hear his words, he was thinking about something else. Sam decided that he really didn't have to wait until tomorrow and could go right now. And anyway, how did he not think of this before? Sam decided that he needed to talk to Daphne and Derek before you left. Daphne, as expected, did not support Sam's intentions. She was outraged by the action of the owner of the house and promised to protest against such a decision. Sam explained that it was not his father who decided so, but his younger brother Mannion demanded to get out. Daphne was even more surprised and called her younger brother a real scumbag. Sam noticed how unpleasant it was for her to talk about Mannion because she didn't even want to say his name. Sam explained that he didn't want to leave because he was told to. But in fact, he himself does not want to stay here and is eager to go on a journey. Sam said that he understands how dangerous it is, but he can no longer stay in this house, much less for another five years. Daphne was visibly upset and tears of disappointment appeared in her eyes. Sam decided that of course he would miss Daphne and the boys from the orphanage, but he couldn't force himself to stay in a place where he was bullied. Sam hugged his beloved maid goodbye and asked everyone for forgiveness. Daphne cried but did not contradict the aspirations of the young master and accepted everything as it was. Before he left, Sam asked if anyone else knew that he was leaving his home. Derek replied that there was no need to worry about it and that for now it would remain a secret from everyone. Sam said that this was great and he would have time to calmly walk away. When leaving Daphne asked to take a bento as a souvenir and Sam promised that he would take care of it on his travels. Sam decided to give all his money to the servants because it was difficult for him to take it with him. He asked to use them for the benefit of the city residents and for his personal needs. Derek thanked him for such generosity and promised to fulfill his request. Sam said that he had to go and promised to write a letter at the first opportunity. Derek and Daphne said goodbye that they would always be happy to see Sam as their guest. And Sam replied that he was grateful to them for everything they did for him. His journey into the unknown began and Sam found himself in a forest far from the city. After looking at the map, he decided that first he needed to visit the royal capital and went on. Sam decided that in the capital, it would be possible to complete many assignments at the guild, and maybe even enroll in a magic academy. He also remembered that the only thing here that could be connected with other worlds is a dungeon, but so far he does not know if such dungeons are somewhere nearby. Sam has also heard about heroes and the Demon King, and it would be nice to meet them too. He realized that he had already been living in this world for a whole year, and now it is absolutely clear that this world is not a dream but a real reality. After all, all the people here are real, and he became that same Sam, also a real inhabitant of this world. He decided that this is why he wants to explore this world and see with his own eyes everything that is here. Sam thought he was looking forward to new discoveries and suddenly heard something strange. Sam realized that it was human breathing, and it was quite weak, and, and we managed to hear it only thanks to enhanced perception. And now there is no doubt the sound comes from the nearby bushes. Sam went to the source of the sound and asked who was there. Having not heard an answer, he went further and a strange picture opened before his eyes. Some girl was sitting leaning on a tree and it was not clear whether she was injured or just tired. She was breathing heavily and didn't look great. Sam decided to find out what happened to this girl and approached her. Her eyes were closed and she appeared to be unconscious. Sam wondered how it was that she ended up here in these forests alone. He noticed how pleasant she was to look at, and this only added more questions. Turning to her, Sam realized that he was conscious because her beautiful eyes opened in response. Sam thought her eyes looked very strong like there was fire in them. A little confused by his thoughts, Sam thought that now was not the time or place to admire female beauty. He asked if she was okay and tried to rouse her. The girl muttered something in response, which made the traveler happy. Sam exclaimed, thank heaven she's alive, and he said she needed medical help. But suddenly the girl pulled Sam towards her, which made him confused. The thought flashed through what she was doing and what she wanted. A new friend quietly whispered in her ear that her stomach was empty. And Sam immediately began to take supplies out of his backpack in an effort to help the beautiful lady. The girl thanked her for the food and admitted that she did not at all expect that she would faint from hunger. 
she noticeably cheered up and even began to laugh. The girl allowed the particularly tasty meat and admitted that she had not eaten such a thing for a long time. Sam just thought it was Daphne's bento, which he never tried himself. The rescued lady apologized and explained that she always thought she could cook her own food anywhere. But it turned out to be completely different, she simply forgot to take groceries with her before she set off and therefore found herself in such a stupid situation. Sam asked how she wanted to cook food for herself if she didn't have any things with her and didn't even have a regular bag. The girl thought about it before answering, and it was clear from her that she was deciding whether to do it or not. She explained that she has the inventory skill and therefore does not need any backpacks or bags. Sam was not only surprised, but one might say he felt something incredible. He wondered if such an ability really existed, since it was only a fantasy in his past life. The girl explained that such an ability is very rare and therefore it is normal to be so surprised, but Sam said that's not the point at all. While Sam was examining the consequences of the hungry girl's invasion of his supplies, he remembered that he had forgotten to introduce himself. Making a mysterious appearance, she said that her name is Urshate and she is a brilliant wizard. Sam clearly did not expect to hear this from the one he saved from starvation, and his eyes grew several times larger. He thought that this girl was one of those people who praise themselves, and it is clear that she is very proud of herself. The guy replied that his name is Samuel, but you can just call him Sam, he's more used to it. The girl said that he had a pleasant name, and she was glad that they met by chance. Sam replied that he was also pleased to meet an interesting person. Having shaken Sam's hand, Urshate's face somehow strangely changed. She got excited and began muttering incomprehensible things, repeating that Sam was a boy. Urshate stated that something was wrong here. But Sam responded by asking why she moved so close to him. Urshate said in a wary voice that Sam has very unique magical abilities and also has a penchant for rare powers. She then apologized for looking without his asking. And in the end she explained that Sam is one of those talented people whom she has been looking for for a long time. Sam asked if this was true and the girl replied that she would not lie because it was not in her interests. Sam thought it was really amazing that he had some unique talent, and it turns out that something incredible is also available to him. Before Sam had time to understand everything that was happening, the girl exclaimed that now there was good news for him. Sam asked suspiciously what the other news was. Urshate said that Sam should rejoice because she, a brilliant wizard, takes him as her student. Sam froze in surprise, continuing to look at his amazing acquaintance. He replied that it was good. Urshate has already shouted that this is an excellent answer and the right decision. Sam hastened to explain that he had not agreed at all. But the great sorceress said that he should not be self-willed now. After all, even if he doesn't want to agree, then everything has long been destined by fate. Urshate explained that from now on the path of power spreads out before Sam's eyes, and she is the one who will completely illuminate the path ahead for him. Sam thought about such other loud statements of the girl. He asked that of course he thought that her words were similar to the truth, but suddenly this was not his fate at all. Although at the same time he sincerely wants to believe her, and therefore he needs to see at least some evidence. Urshate was surprised at the guy's insight and only chuckled in response. Sam asked the girl to demonstrate her strength, and then he would believe that she could become a fire that would illuminate his dark path. Urshate said in surprise that all this was very interesting. After all, for the first time the boy calls her some kind of fire. She advised Sam to try not to be blinded by its bright light. Sam decided to continue to mock the new teacher, and he asked her not to say later that she was unable to move normally due to overeating. Quite expectedly, the great sorceress was furious at such a barb. She promised to immediately show Sam how quickly she could digest the meat she ate. Urshate showed her power and tried to hit Sam, but he skillfully dodged her attack. The next moment he was already rushing towards her, clenching his magic fist. Seeing all this, Urshate didn't even flinch, but only said that it looked good. The great sorceress used protection and, with the help of a tree, repelled the attack of the daring young man. She said Sam was good, but that wasn't good enough. Sam still didn't fully understand what happened and how he could get caught like that. Powerful tree branches wrapped around him and pressed him to the ground, making him unable to move. Urshate said that it really does have a colossal amount of magical energy. But there is no point in it if you don't know how to use it correctly. The great sorceress asked if this could be considered proof of her magical power. Sam, without lying at all, replied that now he believes her. He said he relies on her going forward, and Urshate explained that from that day on he belongs to her and can call her and can call her his teacher. 
Sam agreed and confirmed his decision with a handshake. Urshate, after listening to Sam's story, said whether it was because of family problems that he left home. He replied that he had no regrets. But at the same time, he still decided that it was not worth telling her about his rebirth. Urshate asked why Sam didn't use his powers during their fight. Sam said he didn't quite understand what she was talking about or what abilities she meant. The Great Witch said that it was not surprising that Sam knew nothing about this. After all, magical power is as rare as abilities. Sam realized that we were talking about something very important and asked what ability he had. Urshate replied that apparently his power is called Cutter. The sorceress admitted that she had no idea what this ability was, but it was clearly related to cutting. She explained that it was possible that if Sam picked up a sword, he could become invincible. Sam said sadly, how can this be? And the girl asked why he suddenly became sad and upset. After all, there is no swordsman yet who would have such an ability, and so if Sam hones this ability, he can become the best knight in the country. Sam plucked up courage and said that he did not know how to handle a sword at all. After such revelations, Urshate decided to correct this misunderstanding. She began to train Sam. The sorceress said that she actually doesn't understand much about swords either, and so Sam must first show what he can do. But what her student was able to show shocked the great sorceress. The guy, having made a couple of awkward movements, did not cut off his fingers and perhaps his entire hand. She immediately realized that this was just a complete failure, and she said that Sam's level is so bad that she wants to cry. The guy just agreed with what was said. Urshate advised not to lose heart, it is not only the sword that can cut anything. Sam asked what she meant, and the sorceress explained that everything is really simple, and you can use magic to cut. Sam found meaning in the words and remembered how he used magic when he first defeated a wild bear. Urshate explained that Sam, using the element, can change its shape and strength. The element of fire, the element of water, all this can be transformed as he pleases. For example, from fire you can create the shape of a sword and use it perfectly. And of course Sam can use all this to strengthen his body and use your hand as a sword. In this regard, magical power is unparalleled and is limited only by the limits of the imagination. Urshate reminded that of course you need to practice a lot before doing this, but first we need to solve the problem with the sadness and pessimism that has washed over Sam. Urshate ordered to follow her and reminded that from now on Sam would be constantly busy. During the journey, Sam continued to think that perhaps this really turned out to be a fateful meeting that he had never even dreamed of. Urshate promised her student how one day he would be able to surpass even her, the great sorceress. Sam really began to consider her his teacher and listen to her advice. However, the sorceress did not help Sam with his load when he reminded her of her inventory ability. Urshate stated that it would be good training for him to carry heavy things. Examining his hands after another training session, Sam said that the teacher was a real sadist, and this time she really overdid it. Four years have passed since he became Urshata's disciple. All this time there was hellish training, which nevertheless managed to harden him. And now he can confidently say that every day goes well for you. Sam thought that perhaps he shouldn't have reacted so strongly to his younger brother's words and left home that day. Recently, Sam began to receive letters from servants less and less often and began to worry greatly about this. And yet he understood that they were very far from his home. They also crossed the sea from Urshada and were in the eastern island country, called the Country of the Sun. They combined their training and travel the world at the same time. Sam immediately noticed how similar this country was to Japan, and Urshada said that this place is the center of fire magic. And although she says so, to Sam this environment is terribly reminiscent of the Edo period, even the music seemed very familiar. Sam decided that the difference between this country and Japan is that monsters appear here. After all, there are rumors that here they are very similar to demons. Sam continued to look for his teacher, who had disappeared somewhere. She of course said that she had one simple matter, but it was not worth walking alone in an unfamiliar place. Hearing some strange noise from the road, Sam decided to go take a look. Approaching closer, Sam realized how someone was chasing someone away, and they were sharing something. It turned out that two men who looked like real samurai were arguing. A woman tried to restrain one of them, but he furiously struggled and told his opponent that he would never give him anything in his life. The other man called his opponent names and declared that he was the first to find something. The second began to shout to the girl to leave her dork and go have fun with him. Sam thought that some shit was going on again and decided to join in. He asked if everything would be okay here and why they were fighting. He guessed what was going on here and these guys were just pestering the girl. Therefore it was impossible to pass by and not intervene. 
Sam stated that both of them had not come out on their faces and demanded that the girl be released immediately. One of the characters asked Sam who he was and, noticing that Sam was absolutely not a local resident, told him to go to hell, citing his employment. Both men joined forces and began to insult Sam, threatening to shave him bald and tell his mom about everything, or even send him to live with monks so that he doesn't bother good people. But Sam did not accept their threats and repeated his demand to let the poor girl go. He told them to take their dirty hands off her immediately, and he asked if their ears were really full of crap since they didn't understand what they were being told the first time. The guys were clearly at least surprised at such a formidable child and it was clear on their faces. The guys laughed at such impudence and promised Sam for his audacity to show who is really cool here. Sam did not tolerate ridicule and said that everything would be decided now. He rushed forward at the dumbfounded boars. Without inventing anything, Sam simply grabbed the girl and ran to the side. He asked if she was okay and if she was hurt, but it turned out that everything was fine with her, and Sam rushed back. Sam advised the girl to step aside so that she too would not be caught. He told her not to worry and that he would take care of the rest. The rescued victim of harassment only shouted that she understood everything. Sam wondered what he should do with two boars who were already warming up for a fight. Sam realized that one of them was able to react to his unexpected blow. The bandit, pleased with himself, asked Sam if such a kid really used magic. Sam thought that apparently everything would not be as simple as he expected. The bandits decided to act together and even agreed to divide the reward between two. Suddenly it all started and the trio began to spin in a deadly dance. Sam assessed the speed of the opponents and realized that they were aiming for his neck. He also noticed that they were moving quite synchronously, which was also a nuisance. Sam used a scroll, which helped him gain time and fend off a couple of attacks, and the couple, having caught their breath, rushed at him again. Sam decided that he did not have time to cast a spell and began to simply repel attacks with magic. The thought flashed through his mind that at this rate he might lose to the desperate fighters, and one of them, growling like a wolf, shouted that he had no idea why the hell Sam had come here from Earthsea, but just because he can use rare magic doesn't mean he can defeat them. Sam prepared to rush forward again, but it was not meant to be. Something swift, like an arrow, flashed past and two bandits hit the ground with a crash. Sam immediately understood that help had come to him, she was the unsurpassed great sorceress and his stern teacher Urshada. The relief immediately allowed Sam to relax. Dissatisfied with her voice, the sorceress asked if he really started the fight and lost it himself. Sam did not make excuses to the insightful Urshada and admitted that he did not at all expect that he would almost lose to the local bandits who were not of the highest caliber. Urshada screamed that there were almost none and Sam really got rid of some crooks. As a result, having calmed down her anger a little, the sorceress said that Sam shouldn't get depressed because sometimes bumps are the best teacher. And she herself is obliged to teach everything as quickly as possible. Sam was surprised by her word, she obliged, but did not ask again what she was talking about. Unexpectedly, Urshada apologized and said that it was her fault since she left Sam alone. Sam couldn't help but laugh and asked what was wrong with her, where did she come from such an outburst of kindness, maybe she was sick or ate something not fresh. Urshada did not appreciate the humor of her student and, slapping him on the forehead, called him a moron. Sam was indignant and asked why she strengthened the clicking with magic, because it hurt him. But the stern teacher replied that there was no need to worry, because she was restraining her powerful powers. Urshada reminded that Sam should be able to admit his mistakes. At the same time, she admitted that it was she who taught Sam that he needed to help people who were in trouble. Sam asked for forgiveness for his frivolity, because Urshada only asked her to wait and put on such a show here. The sorceress, having managed to cool down, advised Sam not to take too much into his head. Urshada admitted that she is no longer angry with him, and the most important thing is that everything is fine with him now. Sam caught himself thinking that his teacher is an amazing person because she is so different and formidable as a hurricane and sweet as a summer rainbow. Sam asked what duty she was talking about. The sorceress explained that she needed Sam to quickly master magic, so she brought him here, since there was a temple of fire magic here. Urshada said that she herself could tell the theory, but for Sam it was important to see the full picture and find out what other magicians there are besides her. Sam replied that there is hardly anyone who will be stronger than Urshada. The sorceress explained that most magicians do not like hand-to-hand -hand combat and prefer to fight at long range using water magic, and this is a kind of etiquette among wizards. Urshada said that they themselves differ from others in that they can use magic even in hand-to-hand -hand combat. 
Sam remembered the two bandits and asked since they were quite strong in close combat if that had anything to do with it. Urshader replied that she should have told Sam about this earlier, but she did not at all expect that he would so quickly decide to fight with someone. The sorceress did not speak flatteringly about the two scum and still insisted that they were simply no good in battle. Sam again felt the rush of blood to his face that filled him with his shameful defeat. Urshada said that in the world, according to rumors, there are so-called wizard killers. And it's not that they were professionals who were specially trained, but in battle they are able to compete with wizards and that's why they were called that. Sam remembered those two guys again and said that he felt something similar then. He asked if such people really did not use magic at all during battle. The teacher confirmed his guess and praised him for his intelligence. She explained that in this country such warriors are called samurai and it was with them that Sam got into a fight. Samurai take a long time to learn their skills, honing them every day. And in close combat they are quite dangerous opponents. Sam thought that their movements were really lightning fast and there was absolutely no magic on their part. He agreed that those guys were indeed problematic and said that he thought he was starting to understand where this was going. Urshada stated that Sam would be conducting combat training with the samurai. Sam exclaimed that he knew it. Sam asked that Urshada must have gone crazy because they would grind him into powder. But the teacher replied that otherwise he would just study for an eternity and would not gain mastery. The sorceress asked him not to worry because he would only have one training match. Sam immediately asked how to understand this educational. The guy asked if Urshada had already found someone for him to spar with. To which the teacher answered with childish spontaneity, how else could he have wanted it? The caring teacher asked Sam to listen to her very carefully as he wanted to say something very important. Sam, taking over her alarm, asked what happened. The guy thought that this was the first time he had seen his mentor so serious and apparently this was really something unusual. Urshada paused with a heavy sigh. But Sam was already burning with curiosity and again asked what was the matter. With indescribable bitterness, the all-powerful sorceress declared that they were broke, they didn't have a penny at all. Sam, having assessed the extent of the problem, still asked how it was not at all, and then what do they need to live and eat on? Urshada hastened to calm the upset student and stated that she had an excellent plan for such a case. With genuine admiration, she declared that this plan was grandiose, and they will make a lot of money from training battles. Sam felt that even his mouth was dry from such grandeur because he would have to try harder than anyone else during the campaign. I was exhausted, collapsing to the ground, Sam said. Urshada answered displeasedly that in principle there was nothing surprising in this. The guy was indignant and recalled how he fought almost the whole day. And thank God, thanks to his efforts, he managed to save at least a little money. Urshada asked to stop whining like a girl because isn't it great that there is an opportunity to fight samurai? Sam replied, without much enthusiasm, that of course it was. He remembered how this grandiose plan of his mentor began. Sam then asked if she really decided to throw him into a cage with lions and even call it a grand plan. The sorceress replied that she herself was shocked by such a chic name. The guy, not appreciating the joke, shouted that he simply didn't believe it because you couldn't be that crazy. But Urshada exclaimed that she was completely sure, because this is brilliant, Sam will learn by fighting, and at the same time they will be able to improve their financial situation. Sam asked why such drastic measures were needed. After all, they had the money that that old pervert from the casino gave them. And you can use them. Sam recalled how the sorceress herself said that they would only use them when a rainy day came. But Urshade amazed Sam with her answer, saying that it was so long ago that she no longer remembers everything, and that money too is already gone. The sorceress also said that apparently the rainy day had already passed and therefore there was no money left. Sam shouted that he had made the biggest mistake of his life when he gave his money to her to keep. But the sorceress shouted back, advising her not to run into trouble. Urshate reminded that she does everything just for his sake, and it's no one's fault that he hasn't learned to fly yet. Sam reminded that entering the country illegally is a serious crime, and in general he can fly, but not for long. As a result, the scandal subsided, and Sam gave in under the pressure of experience. He asked what Urshate actually came up with. The sorceress praised the guy for his wise decision, as befits her student. But Sam recalled that he was still not happy about the whole situation. Urshata explained that Sam would only need to fight the same bandits as he did on the street. But it is desirable that they were samurai. And then she organizes a training tournament. As a result, if the samurai defeat Sam, they will receive prize money. And if not, they will pay good money for their loss. Sam thanked her for her trust and asked if she was really so confident in him that he would be able to cope with the samurai. 
Urshate replied that she believed in her capable student, and opponents will underestimate the child in front of them, and you can take advantage of this. Although it wouldn't be bad if Sam lost a few times, and it will be profitable. Sam asked what would be the benefit of being smashed on the ground. The cunning sorceress explained that when Sam unexpectedly loses, it will be her turn to fight, and if the samurai cannot defeat her, they will be obliged to pay double. Sam was amazed at such a multi-step and said that Urshate is a real devil in female form. Sam was inspired by the planned event and agreed to this adventure. In the end, everything went well and thanks to the tournament, Sam was able to understand how samurai fight, and at the same time they earned good money. After all, all's well that ends well. Some strange character asked Sam to give him a minute, which surprised the guy. Sam asked what he wanted. Or maybe he also wants to challenge you to a duel, but if this is so, then it's too late and the tournament is over. Yes, and I'm already quite tired. Suddenly, the stranger began to somehow fall on top of Sam. Sam immediately became alert and prepared to attack, caught in a fit of paranoia. But expectations were not met, and the guy simply collapsed on the floor, and then introduced himself as Unsei Tadamachi. He stated that he had seen Sam's power with his own eyes, and therefore wanted to ask for a favor. Unsei Tadamachi screamed and asked Sam to lend him power. Sam asked the guy to stop screaming and get to his feet. Sam reminded the guy that a true samurai does not kneel down to beg for help. I'm ready to listen to you, Sam said, becoming interested in the strange young man. Unsei Tadamachi spoke about the tragedy that happened in his life. It turns out that he is in the service of the head of the Shin clan, and because of him, Fury-sama, the daughter of that same head, ran away from home. The samurai also said that Fury-sama grew up in incredible severity all this time, and she practically never left the house. Therefore, Unsei Tadamachi had not seen her face for a very long time. He asked himself, so that means they saw each other before without any problems. The samurai explained that there was no problem with this, and one could say that she was his childhood friend. And despite the fact that they were of different origins, they often played in the garden of her estate. However, one fine day, they practically stopped seeing each other, and it so happened that the only way left to talk to Fury-sama was through a special screen. Unsei Tadamachi admitted that even such communication was a joy for him. Sam understood the true motives of the samurai in love and stated that everything was clear to him, and Unsei was simply in love with this master's daughter named Fury, and in general one could have said so right away. But noble Unsei was indignant at Sam's words and declared that this was complete nonsense, and it cannot happen that the daughter of the head of the clan herself could fall in love with a person from a low class, it's not supposed to be that way. Sam replied, all this is understandable, but Unsei himself likes the girl. The samurai nevertheless admitted that he has high feelings. And Sam offered to live out all these lyrics and said that as far as he understood, the young daughter of the head of the clan was locked up for a long time under strict guardianship. And apparently, tired of such a life, she decided to make legs from her father's prison. The samurai said that everything is so, and that's the problem. Urshate asked the samurai how he was going to look for his beloved, since he had not seen her for many years and was completely unaware of what she looked like now. It was then that Unsei Tadamachi expressed his brilliant idea. He explained that this is why he came, to ask the strangers Sam and Urshetu to help him with the help of long-range vision magic. The samurai in love also turns out to be interested in the magic of flight that Sam used during the tournament. The samurai suggested, with the help of Sam, who would soar into the skies to see where Fury might be. Unsei Tadamachi explained that he himself, of course, does not know what Fury looks like, but in this city, she will definitely be conspicuous because of her rich clothes. The samurai said that the fugitive was dressed in a purple kimono, and her face was hidden by a scarf, and no one else in this city has such kimonos. Sam and Urshada looked at each other because they both understood who they were talking about. And Sam asked if there was a flower pattern on that kimono by chance. Unsei Tamadachi immediately perked up and shouted that Sam had seen her. What frightened the young wizard? Sam, deciding not to tell the samurai about what really happened, said that they met her this morning on the road and she looked like she was lost. Then they called her, but she did not respond and ran away. The samurai began to lament how this happened and why they didn't help her. Sam apologized and reminded her that they didn't know anything and therefore didn't detain her. And Urshada, having decided to help love take place, promised to help the samurai with the search for fury. Unsei Tadamachi replied that he would owe them his life for their help in the search. Another samurai appeared, who was seriously wounded and was moving with all his might. Unsei Tadamachi shouted, who did this to Mr. M Deputy, Commander. The sorceress decided to examine the wounds, and Sam asked who the man was. 
The samurai explained that he was the leader of the squad sent to look for Fury-sama. Unsei Tadamachi began asking the wounded commander what happened to him and who inflicted such terrible wounds on him. The commander, barely breathing, whispered to the loving samurai that Fury was kidnapped by demons. Sam said that this must be true because he himself had recently heard about the appearance of demons near the city. The wounded man immediately groaned that this opponent was not some little demon but a real young red demon, and he was on the edge of the city. This news did not please those around him at all. The sorceress wondered why the red demon came to the city because they should not come down from the mountains. Sam asked if Urshate really knew something about all this. The teacher told how a long time ago she herself had fought with such a demon, and that fight was very difficult. The wounded samurai said that their leader's lair was in the mountains and of course he usually doesn't come out, but something happened this time. Urshate asked the samurai not to waste energy on talking. She said that he needed urgent medical attention and that she had a doctor friend nearby. Therefore, she will take the wounded man to him. The sorceress advised the others to start chasing the demon in the meantime. Sam asked how they would cope in this matter without her. Urshader replied that she knew where the red demon's lair was. Besides, even if she gets lost on the road, she will be able to see everything from the sky. The sorceress promised that she would definitely catch up with them and Sam should go forward with Unsei Tamadachi. Urshada asked if the samurai could find the way to the demon's lair. Unsei Tamadachi replied that you can rely on him and will take you where you need to go. Sam and the samurai rushed in pursuit sparing no effort. Sam could barely keep up with the guy in love and thought that he was incredibly fast and were they really all such masters here? And in general, how fast is the strongest samurai if he cannot even keep up with an ordinary one? Unsei Tamadachi apologized to Sam for getting him into such trouble. Sam replied that the samurai did not need to worry and that he himself was already involved in this from the beginning, and even now I could not simply close my eyes to such an event. In addition, he was taught to always help those who are in trouble. Unsei Tamadachi praised Sam's teacher and expressed his gratitude for his help. The samurai warned that demons had appeared ahead and offered to destroy them all. Sam of course accepted this offer and the two of them, as if in a competition, left no trace of a small group of demons. Unsei Tamadachi shouted that Sam did a great job, and Sam replied that he was not the only one who showed a master class in destroying demons. The samurai said that it couldn't have been any other way, since he was, after all, the son of the current head of the Unsei school. Sam asked what kind of school he hadn't heard of. Tamadachi said that in this area his style is a very famous type of fencing, and it is practically on par with the MMA style. Having covered another short section of the path, Unsei Tamadachi reported that they had arrived at their goal. Sam asked if they would go in there right away. The samurai replied that it was natural and necessary to attack head-on. Sam admitted that he also wouldn't mind saving the girl as quickly as possible and offered to go after the demon's head. Sam's magic torch didn't provide much light and he had to move carefully in such a dangerous place. Unsei Tamadachi admitted that he somehow didn't like this ominous silence. But Sam encouraged himself and said, let's move on. Finding himself at a crossroads, the samurai pointed in one of the directions and said that something fishy was smelling from that side. The pair of heroes continued on their way, and soon the narrow corridor gave way to a huge hall, not at all friendly in appearance. The owner of this hall, who was sitting on the throne, turned out to be just as unfriendly in appearance. The red demon asked why people came to visit him. Sam immediately felt enormous pressure from the demon and felt unpleasant. Unsei Tamadachi exclaimed that they had come to save Fury-sama. The demon grinned and asked, apparently they mean the girl who is next to him. Sam recognized her and thought, this was really the same girl he stood up for on the street. The samurai asked why the red demon kidnapped her. The demon replied that there were reasons for this and that he should not report, or someone dares to object. Sam and Unsei Tamadachi felt the strong energy of the demon and both realized that they definitely could not defeat him. Sam decided that since they had come and demanded an answer from the demon, Sam asked if the demon had taken the Lord's daughter hostage just to ransom her. After all, this is very petty on his part, for such a formidable demon. The red demon laughed, and the acoustics of the hall added to the effect. The demon asked if they really wanted him to die of laughter. And he said that ignorance is still a terrible thing. The red demon, looking at Fury-sama, said that there was a good reason to kidnap her. And it's strange that it's such a secret. He stated that he did this because Fury-sama is his granddaughter. The young samurai Unsei Tamadachi probably expected everything, but not this. He shouted to the demon that it was all a lie, and how dare he say such things. The samurai demanded evidence, and the red demon replied that all the evidence was in front of them. 
The red demon offered to look at the true face of Fury-sama and began to pull off the scarf. Unsei Tamadachi was all wet from experience and excitement, but when he saw the horns on the woman's head, he also began to breathe frequently. Fury-sama asked not to look at her. The red demon asked that since he is a real monster, then who is Fury-sama in this case, can the saviors answer him such a question? The red demon said that Fury-sama is the daughter of his child, who would be married to the head of Shen. The red demon roared and exclaimed that, despite this alliance and his consent, the damned people took and killed his daughter. And this is what this so-called blind love for people led to. The red demon admitted that no matter what, he loved his only daughter and therefore has every right to take his granddaughter to raise. Fury-sama thanked the brave samurai for coming here without fear for her sake. The girl said that she was fine and not to worry because no one here would hurt anyone. Therefore, Unsei Tadamachi can leave and this is her wish. The red demon, having fun, asked why the people were quiet and what was going on with them, were they really upset because of something? The demon asked the samurai how it felt to know that he had served for so long a girl who was only half human and half demon. And does he have anything to say about this? Unsei Tadamachi exclaimed that it was wonderful and added a banzai shout. Seeing how this enraged the demon, the samurai continued his speech. He said that this is even better and Fury Samba really suits the horns and he himself was even turned on by such a new image of the girl. This confession of the samurai stunned everyone who witnessed it. And the red demon said that apparently he would never understand the train of thought of stupid people. And now he is no longer interested in uninvited guests. The head ordered the two demons Uki and Saki to immediately deal with their enemies. Sam asked if the samurai was ready for battle and he replied that he simply could not wait to start and could be relied on. The two demons decided to start with spectacular jumps, and Sam shouted that they were attacking. The demons turned out to be fast and skillful, which unpleasantly surprised the guests of the cave. Sam relied on magic, and it did not let him down, years of grueling science from the strict sorceress took its toll. The samurai skillfully wielded a sword, and, while repelling attacks, did not forget to attack. At some point, the demon practically got Sam, and an unpleasant chill ran down his spine. Unsei Tamadachi said Sam was on the ropes. But Sam replied that it was just the samurai's imagination and there was no need to embellish it. Sam threw a fireball and said that should be enough for them, and he himself prepared another surprise. The demons, dodging the attack, rushed at Sam and pierced his body with pleasure. But at the same time, the demons realized that this was just an illusion that they had caught. They no longer had time to react, and the sharp steel of the samurai's sword sent them to their ancestors. The Unsei style, the kite strike, as the samurai would have explained, but the demons didn't care anymore. When Sam said goodbye, he told them that they asked for it, and that's what they got. Due to the fact that demons only have one seeing eye, it was difficult for them to see everything in the three-dimensional world, and so Sam took this chance to deceive them. Having finished rejoicing in victory, Sam asked his partner what they would now do with the most important demon. The solution to this issue was prevented by some sound from the depths of the corridor, which was rapidly approaching. The source turned out to be Urshada, and Sam did not deny himself the pleasure of saying how long it was. The sorceress apologized for her lateness and assessed the situation. Sam, feeling an incredible surge of confidence, exclaimed that now they definitely don't have to worry about anything. And the samurai noticed that something was wrong with the red demon. And indeed, the demon was crying incredibly, but he was crying and muttering something incoherently. As a result, the red demon was bound without resistance. Sam asked the sorceress how to understand all this. Urshate recalled how she said that a long time ago, she taught moral lessons to this demon. Suddenly, Fury-sama attacked Sam and screamed that she wanted to thank her fateful man from the bottom of her heart for saving her on the street. Sam asked to move away from him a little and said that it was a pure coincidence and not fate at all. Unsei Tamadachi decided to intervene and explain to the young demoness that it was indecent to behave this way towards Sam. Fury noticed the samurai and called him a bore and an eternally gloomy, big-headed idiot. The samurai sadly asked where she came up with such vile words. Urshada praised Sam for his resilience and said that he can now be proud of himself, and she is very pleased with her student. The great sorceress turned to Fury and Tamadachi and explained to them that she had entered into a magical contract with the red demon so that he would not do anything else or bother anyone. And from now on everything will be alright. But there is one thing, and he is actually Fury's grandfather, and this cannot be changed in any way. And now it will be difficult for Fury herself to live, constantly hiding her horns. Fury replied that she understood all this and knew that she was born with such a sin. Therefore, I am ready to carry my burden all my life. 
Urshada corrected the girl and said that he was indeed born this way, but it would be more accurate to say that this is a curse that is inherited from the ancestors. However, what Furisama will do next is much more important. After all, sin is not something that God brings on people, it is brought on by people themselves. The sorceress advised Fury to follow the right path in this world, like a man with horns. And only she, a unique creation from the union of a human and a demon, can do this. Fury promised to remember the words of the sorceress and always follow them. Sam asked the samurai if he had really come to see them off, but Unsei Tamadachi said that he is the one who wants to thank for the help. Sam replied that there was no problem and was glad to help a good man, and perhaps they will see each other again. The samurai wished him well and promised that he would remember Sam. Sam, looking at the receding city and thinking about the samurai and the demon girl, decided that he did not have such a relationship yet. But suddenly he noticed that something was wrong with the sorceress. Sam still couldn't figure out what had happened to teacher Urshada. Why did she faint? Suddenly she woke up and called out to him. Sam immediately rushed to her side and asked her how she was feeling. Urshada said sheepishly, so I fainted after all. Then she told Sam not to worry and calm down. Urshada explained that she was fine now and nothing terrible had happened. And her fainting is a common occurrence. Sam find out what the problem is. But Urshada did not answer, but only asked for a little more rest. Sam didn't argue, and when he didn't find out, he left the teacher alone. Sam wondered if she was ill and had any health problems. Though he remembered that they had been together for four years and Urshada had never experienced anything like this before. Or maybe there was something, but he just didn't notice it and didn't care. Sam was still able to calm down and continued to think about the problem while sitting by the sorceress's bed. After a while, Urshada was surprised to find Sam still sitting by her bed without leaving. Sam asked her how she was feeling after her nap. After a moment's thought, the sorceress replied that she felt quite well and had had a good night's sleep. Sam said that he would definitely call a doctor to find out what the problem was with her condition. But Urshada explained that it is not necessary to do this as it does not make any sense. Sam tried to protest, but the sorceress said that she wanted Sam to hear something important. Urshada confessed that the fact is that she doesn't really have much time left in this world. Sam was indignant and asked her what she was talking about and why she had decided that. He asked her to talk as much as possible because he couldn't understand anything. Sam asked how things could have changed so dramatically, and where did the ever-optimistic Urshada go? The sorceress asked her student to calm down and listen to her to the end. Sam knew this wasn't going to be an easy conversation, but he didn't object. Urshada explained that it was because she was suffering from an incurable disease and that was why she fainted. She also said that the cause and methods of treatment of this disease are not known to anyone. This disease only affects people with high levels of magical power. It turns out that this disease is very rare and dangerous. Sam reminded her that in the four years they'd been together, he'd never noticed any problems with her health. But Urshader replied that she was adept at hiding her problems from him. She apologized for doing this, but it was better for everyone. The sorceress explained that all these four years spent together, Ono felt good and even stopped remembering her illness, but alas, she did not go anywhere. Urshada said that when she was informed of her illness, she didn't even spend a year with her family. Then she abandoned everything that was connected with her, and without saying a word to anyone, went on a journey. At that moment, she had to leave behind all the evidence and evidence of her existence and forget about her past. Erase everything I knew and remembered. The sorceress explained that after a long time of loneliness, she met Sam, and she considers it more than a meeting, but fate. Sam asked her why she was so sure that the disease was so serious and incurable. After all, four whole years have passed, and surely something can be done. Yes, and medicine did not stand still, everything could already change for the better. But the sorceress only replied that you should not worry so much and waste your energy on a useless task. Urshada said that she was already very surprised and extremely happy. And the fact that the fire of her life lasted for four whole years is already more than enough to leave in peace. 
the sorceress suggested that perhaps she was only given this time to meet Sam, and she's glad it happened. It hurt Sam to hear what she was saying, and he begged her to stop talking like it was the end. He began to remember how he had always believed and hoped that from the moment they met, their further journeys would begin and they would always be together. He truly believed that they would never part. Then he realized that he had never really thought about it before. After all, her strong character, her self-confidence and arrogance, as well as a beautiful smile. All this, everything connected with her and everything that he learned about her was dear to him and he loved it. Urshader reminded Sam that he was already an adult and should have understood by now. The sorceress asked him not to cry, he is conditionally a small child. She explained that she didn't want Sam to worry about her at all. After all, she will always live inside his heart and he will always feel her near. The sorceress apologized for everything that had happened. She reminded him that only she could comfort her best student. Then Urshait said, he has one last thing left that she wants to do before she ends her life's journey. The sorceress stated that she wanted to give Sam all of herself. Sam replied that if possible, he would like to inherit all the most precious things connected with it. But Urshada corrected him, saying that he had misunderstood. Urshada said that she wants Sam to literally accept all of her, the life she created and her last magic, and it will be the most precious gift for him. This will be her legacy as a token of eternal gratitude. The sorceress began to say that he should accept all her magical power, skill and knowledge, as well as the abilities that she was endowed with. And all this he should inherit in exchange for her life. And this is her last wish, and if she fulfills it, she will be ready to leave in peace. Sam asked her how this could happen and how she would do it. Urshate recalled how during their first meeting, she had said that she was actually the greatest wizard of this world, and for her, nothing that has to do with magical powers is impossible. Sam recalled the moment of their meeting and remembered her first words. Indeed, Urshata was the one who lit the way for him, and that is why he began to follow her and listen to everything. Behind her incredible bright glow, she studied her optimism in the powers of magic. Urshada asked Sam not to tell her that he didn't want all of her powers, knowledge, and abilities on his own. Sam replied that he didn't have a chance to argue with his strict and reasonable mentor. Sam admitted that the only one who can accept her for who she is as well as learn all the powers and skills is only him and no one else. Urshada lit up the room with a bright flash and exclaimed that she would immediately hand over all of herself to Sam. Sam felt not only the light, but also the incredible warmth that came from Urshate. He felt as if they were merging into one, and it was happening with a touch. As soon as the bright light disappeared and the strange warmth stopped warming, Urshate said that now she was happy and the process was over. The great sorceress explained that in order to take advantage of everything he had received and learn how to use it the same way she did, Sam would have to train a lot in the future. But she is sure that this will not be a problem for him, and he will completely cope. Sam could barely contain the emotion, thinking that he should tell her something, because he still had something left that he didn't have time to tell her. But Urshada got ahead of the student's thoughts and decided to talk about something important for the last time. The great sorceress explained that this might be her last conversation with Sam. Ono squeezed her favorite student's hand tightly, and confessed that she had loved him for a very long time. Urshate exclaimed that she loved him as a teacher, as a family member, and as a girl, and she loved him with all her heart. Touched by Sam, feeling how treacherously his eyes began to fill with tears, he confessed in response. With all his childish sincerity, he declared that he also loved her very much. Urshater replied that she knew about it, but was afraid to admit it before. After all, I always thought that such a girl, who was destined to die soon, would hardly suit him. Urshada said with regret that if she had known it would be hard to leave like this, she would have confessed her feelings much earlier. Sam sensed in all this, for a while, an evil decision of fate, because it was all so unfair and stupid, that she's leaving so early. The great sorceress asked Sam to live for the two of them and be happy. 
he also needs to fall in love with someone else, cultivate a love for a good person, and with it start a family. Sam said, still crying, that they were the greatest wizards he would ever meet anywhere else, so it can't promise all that. Urshada explained that his decision was wrong, and he would definitely find someone close to him, and she, as the greatest sorceress, would guarantee him this. Sam decided not to waste time arguing, saying that he promised to find his own happiness and vocation for both of them. Urshada said that Sam should forgive her, but right now she was very sleepy. The great sorceress asked her disciple to give her a final kiss. Sam could not ignore the request of a loved one and approached the great sorceress. A blushing Urshada admitted that actually this is her first kiss in her life feels unusual. Sam, as embarrassed as she was, also confessed his inexperience. As he extinguished the candle, Sam wept even more, feeling that he had extinguished not the light at all, but the very life of the great sorceress. He bade her good night. Sam went to the meeting with the body of his beloved sorceress. He found the very house where Urshada had grown up. After her death, Sam received a letter addressed to him. He immediately thought it looked like a will. He also remembered that he didn't know anything about his teacher's past life. He didn't even know Urshade's full name. And of course he didn't know about her terminal illness. Also, after reading the letter, it turned out that his teacher was a court sorceress of the Kingdom of Sky. He was also able to learn from the letter that she was the eldest daughter of the Walker County family. And most importantly, before she left, she told him how she felt. Sam thought ruefully that it would have been much better if he had asked her that much earlier. Sam was determined that he would carry out her errand and last wish. Therefore, he must take the body of his beloved sorceress to her family, because it will be right. When Sam arrived at her family's home, he was surprised by the luxury surrounding it. He thought that it was necessary to ask someone for help to get inside. Suddenly, a guard came up to him and asked what he was doing here. The guard explained that this was the manor of the Earl of the Walker family and asked for an explanation of the purpose of his visit. Sam introduced himself and claimed to be a disciple of Urshada, the daughter of the Earl of Walker. Sam explained that he had come to this house to meet the Earl of Walker Manor in person. The guard's expression showed his surprise. The guard replied that this was complete nonsense. He said that Mrs. E. Urshade had run away from the estate five years ago, and she's been missing ever since. Sam said that he had been with her all this time, and the other day there was a disaster, the daughter of the Earl of Walker died. The guard considered everything the guy said as nonsense and asked him to stop talking all this nonsense. But as soon as the guard saw Urshate's face, he exclaimed that it couldn't be her and that it really was her. As a result, Sam was met by what he understood to be Urshate's parents. Count Walker turned to Sam and expressed his gratitude for bringing their daughter's body and dying will to their home. Sam said there was no need to bow to him, and he, as a disciple of the great sorceress Urshate, could not do otherwise because he himself owes her a lot. The Count replied that he understood everything but still couldn't help but be grateful for such an act. The Earl apologized for not being able to introduce himself right away, but gave his name as Jones Walker and explained that he was the owner of this estate. He also introduced his wife, Grace Walker, who invited Sam to sit on a chair. Sam said he was glad to meet you and thanked you for the reception. He said you could just call him Sam and it would be easier for everyone. Jones Walker reported that he had already read Urshate's letter and as far as he understood from it, Sam had inherited their daughter's magic and essence. Jones Walker admitted that now he understands how much Sam was dear to their daughter. Sam said that if it was true, he was glad to hear it. Jones Walker admitted that he would never have thought that their daughter, a real rebel, would get such a rare and dangerous disease. It was all the more surprising for him to learn that she had decided to take a young man as an apprentice. Jones Walker said that after all that happened, as a parent, he feels only contempt for himself. But Sam said it was too much to blame because there was no way to fix it. Sam said that he himself could not notice her illness, although he was constantly with her for five years. And so he blames himself very much for his lack of discretion, 
which did not allow him to find out about the illness of their daughter Urshate. Jones Walker also responded by telling Sam not to bore himself with remorse because that wouldn't fix the situation. Jones Walker said that Sam, on the contrary, deserves their gratitude. After all, thanks to his act, they can now properly bury their daughter. Jones Walker looked closely at Sam and said that it looked like Urshate really loved him and no one could have expected that from her. Sam admitted that he found out about her high feelings for himself only just before her death. And then he said that he himself was very fond of his teacher, who lit up his path. But unfortunately, I was also able to tell her this too late, only at the sunset of her journey. Sam apologized for what he might have said and explained that in many ways he thought of Urshate as his family. Jones Walker visibly brightened up at Sam's comment. The sorceress's father asked Sam to share as many details about their daughter's life as possible. Sam told his disconsolate parents and sipped his tea, telling them everything he knew. He also told about all the wanderings and adventures. Grace Walker ended up thanking Sam for telling her and taking a little time away from the tragedy that had befallen their home. Sam said that their daughter really was a very funny person who will be infinitely missed by him. John Walker asked Sam what he planned to do in the future, stay in these lands or go somewhere else to travel. Sam replied that he would like to stay in the royal capital for a while now, as he still had some unfinished business to attend to. Jones Walker asked what business interests he had in the capital. Sam declared, to the surprise of Urshate's parents, that he must surpass his master and become the greatest wizard in these lands and possibly in the entire world. Jones Walker appreciated the enormity of the young wizard's plans and asked if Sam didn't think it was a very difficult task for someone who decided to do it alone. Sam agreed with the experienced Count's comment, explaining that first he would strive to become the court wizard of this country and then improve his abilities and move on to more. Grace Walker said that their daughter, Urshada, also aspired to become the royal wizard of this country and therefore their goals are completely the same. Sam agreed that in the first stage, he would actually do what his teacher did, but it would only be a passing grade. After all, in the future, he will not give up his dream of becoming the greatest wizard in the whole world. Jones Walker, listening in silence to Sam's plans, eventually said that this is a wonderful goal and it is worth living to move towards it. Grace Walker advised Sam to make the royal capital his stronghold in this case and then invited him to stay at their estate. Grace Walker explained that their daughter wrote to them in a letter to take care of Sam as if he were their own child. And so they will be happy if Sam allows them to thank him in this way, and in doing so, they will fulfill their daughter's request. Noticing the young wizard's confusion, Jones Walker promised that everything would be all right and Sam wouldn't have to worry about anything. Jones Walker said he had a great idea as long as Sam didn't mind. The owner of the estate offered the young guy to become the wizard of their family. Sam, clearly not expecting this, asked if Jones Walker was sure, to which he immediately replied that he really wanted it. Jones Walker claimed that they even had a daughter's seal, and it would be a shame if some other house took Sam into their service as a wizard. Grace Walker explained that fortunately they are a family with a large wizarding pedigree. They also hold the title of Count, and her husband serves as the second in command of a squad in the first magical army. Gray Walker said that this option would be a great opportunity for Sam to prove himself, and her husband would be a good support for him. Sam asked why they were willing to go to such lengths for him. The parents explained that since this was their daughter's last request, they would like to fulfill it no matter what, because it is their duty to her. After a moment's thought, Sam replied that he was ready to accept their offer and would be happy to rely on them in the future. Jones Walker said that if everything was settled, then he should introduce his daughters to Sam because from now on, they would all be living together. Sam thought it would be interesting to meet the Urshate sisters and find out what they were like. As a result, the owner of the family took Sam to the girls and said that the pride of their family is their daughters. Jones Walker introduced the young blonde and said that this was his second daughter Lysroth. 
The girl clarified that she can be called just Lies and added that she is glad to meet you. Lies thanked Sam for taking care of their older sister and being there for her in her most difficult hour. Jones Walker then introduced his third daughter, Alicia. The girl, visibly embarrassed, murmured that it was a pleasure to meet Sam. Lisa explained her younger sister's agitation and said that Alicia was a little out of sorts with the guys, so you shouldn't be offended by her. Sam said it was fine and he wasn't worried about it at all. In the end, the young wizard told everyone at once that he was happy to meet them and get to know their family better. Suddenly Alicia overcame her confusion but said in a firm voice that she too was glad to meet you. As a result, Jones Walker introduced his fourth daughter named Erica. The owner of the manor asked Erica to respond to the guest in some way. Erica exclaimed that Sam must be the Ur Light sister's radio receiver. She angrily promised that she would never recognize him as such. Jones Walker, clearly embarrassed by his daughter's reaction, explained that she was only a year older than Sam, and since they both know magic, no matter what, it seems to him that they will eventually find a common language. Erica flushed in a fit of rage, but her father tried to explain that Sam was a dear guest of their house, and therefore it was rude to behave like this towards him. Erica, clearly not going to listen to her father's words, said that she did not intend to recognize this stranger ever, and this was her last word. Sam felt a little uncomfortable with Erica's reaction. Lisa said that Sam needed to excuse her and understand because Erica admired Urshate's older sister. In the end, Lisa suggested that Sam cheer up a little and go with her to see his new room. Sam happily followed the girl away from Erica. Lisa pointed out the bedroom and explained that if Sam needed a bath or something, all he had to do was call the servants. Sam thanked him for his help and said the room was beautiful. Lisa reminded Sam that from now on they were family and they didn't need to forget about it, so they didn't need to be grateful for every little thing. Lisa decided that Sam was tired from the road and suggested that he not worry about anything and rest properly. Sam agreed that it would be better this way, and after saying goodbye to Lies, he fell asleep for the first time in this new place. In the end, it had been a full week since Sam had found a new family. Sam realized with annoyance that he couldn't use even half of the abilities he'd inherited from Urshate. After all, he tried almost all of them in a week, but the result was this. Sam, remembering his favorite teacher, once again admitted that she was still an amazing wizard. His thoughts were interrupted by a knock on the door and Lisa asked permission to enter the room. Lies asked if Sam was available right now. The guy said he wasn't busy at all and asked what had happened. Lies said mysteriously that it was about something Urshate had asked her about in the letter. Before Sam could ask what the problem was, he heard the answer that Lisa was going to be his teacher from now on. Lisa promised that from that very day on, she would teach Sam a lot about her martial arts. Sam was surprised to think that this was a very peculiar style of hospitality in the Walker family. Sam thought about it as soon as it all came down to it. Lies said that she had heard that Sam was pretty good at martial arts. Sam explained how Urshada was constantly hammering the basics of the case into him. Lies chuckled and suggested that her older sister must have been very caring and nice to Sam. Then the new teacher said that she was still a little worried about their studies. Sam asked her what she was worried about since it would take her a long time to know. Lies explained that Urshate's magic was amazing, but martial arts were a different matter altogether. And if you do not take into account the magical abilities, then she herself is very strong in battle. Lisa said that Urshada had written in a letter that Sam had a predisposition to use magic in battle, so she had to teach him martial arts. Lies explained that otherwise Sam would not be able to surpass Urshade. Lisa was told that Sam could use body enhancement magic and advised to prepare for the duel. Sam was a little doubtful that he could actually use body enhancement magic. It made him uneasy to use that power against anyone other than Urshate. While Sam was thinking about his abilities and opportunities, a new teacher suddenly came to mind, and the promising wizard felt the stars in his eyes. 
Lisa advised Sam to be much more careful, and she reminded him that he had too many unprotected places. Sam stepped back from the blow and decided it was probably a joke. Sam admitted that Lies was too fast, so fast that he couldn't even see her clearly. Lies said that since he could still stand on his feet, then he should continue their lesson. Sam threw himself to the side and begged Lisa to wait a bit. But a hail of blows rained down on the young wizard and he only screamed in pain. In the end, the heavy landing ended his torment. Lisa explained that Sam's eyes could barely keep up with her movements, so his body couldn't react quickly. Sam wondered if it was even possible to keep track of it. Lies said that Sam had a sharp eye, but he still had a lot to learn in the art of fighting. The new teacher promised that next time she wouldn't be as soft on Sam as this time. Sam could still feel the pain of the blows, but he just wondered how soft they were. Sam said that now he understood how strong Lisa was. The girl thanked for such an assessment and laughed. Mize was informed that she was, after all, a disciple of the Holy Swordsman. What kind of Holy Swordsman is this? Sam immediately wondered. Lies was surprised and explained that this title is given to the strongest swordsman in the country. Sam replied that now everything is clear to him and really everything indicates that Lisa is a student of the strongest in this art. Lies asked if Sam recognized her as his teacher after their fight. After all, it was obvious from the beginning that he doubted her skill. Sam laughed and admitted that there was no longer any doubt in his mind about her abilities. Lies said it was the right thing to do, and then, while resting, she asked how Sam was feeling after the death of Urshade. Lies asked if he was able to cry out and survive this moment or if he was still suffering. Sam that he is still very sad and really cried a lot, thinking about the days when Urshada was with him. However, now he is no longer burdened with such a strong sadness because he must be strong to complete the planned task. Lisa said she was glad to hear that he was all right. And you really need to look to the future, remembering only the good things. Still, Lisa reminded Sam that he was still a child. And if suddenly he really wants to cry, then you don't need to restrain yourself and still give free rein to emotions. Sam just nodded, embarrassed by the revelation. Sam said he understood, but what about Lisa and her sisters? How they are doing, and what is the mood? Lies replied that of course everyone was very sad. And then, after a little thought, Lisa admitted that she personally wasn't particularly worried. Even if it sounds very reckless on her part, it's just the way it is. Sam was surprised by this answer and asked if she wasn't sad. Lies replied that of course she was very sorry that her sister could not live as long as possible. And maybe she didn't have enough time to enjoy life in such a short time. But still, she was the kind of girl who definitely wouldn't die without doing everything she wanted to do. Lisa said that she was pretty sure Ur Shasta had had a lot of fun during those four years with Sam by her side. Therefore, it is best to say goodbye to her without sadness, with a smile on your face. Besides, this is exactly what Ur Shada herself would have wanted. Sam understood the whole point of making such a statement to Lisa and told her that she really was right. Lisa admitted that in some ways she even envies her sister. Sam asked her what her envy was, but Lisa jumped up abruptly and said that the conversation was over and she needed to continue training. Sam immediately remembered his bruised spots and yelled that he hadn't had time to rest yet. Once home, Sam met up with Erica. She immediately called Sam to come with her, her voice full of displeasure. Sam thought it was all very strange since it had been two whole weeks and she had suddenly decided to talk to him. Sam, trying to find out, asked if she had any plans for today. Erica immediately called Sam an impudent person and advised him not to think that because he was practicing with her older sister, he could easily become friends with her. Sam tried to soften Erica's anger by saying that he didn't think anything of the sort. But Erica yelled that she wasn't interested in his friendship at all and ordered him to follow her. Sam kept asking where they were going in such a hurry and Erica barked back that it was the guild. 
Once in the guild, Sam admitted that he had hoped to see a lot more people here because it seemed to him that there should be a lot of life here. Erica explained that this guild is small only because it is represented by the royal family in the capital. And didn't Sam know anything about it? Sam said that he understood now. And Erica, as always viciously, thought that in the dungeon she would expose Sam's true face. Sam decided that he needed to finish up completely and go home soon because he didn't feel comfortable being around Erica for too long. Voices could be heard from behind, also rushing through the queue. A larger-than-life guy nudged Sam with his shoulder and pushed his way forward, telling him not to get in the way. As Pudgy passed by, he pointed out to Sam that they were all cursed and dirty commoners. Sam was deeply hurt by this and he felt his anger rising, but he tried to calm himself down anyway, not wanting to get into any more trouble. Puffy yelled, slamming his fist down on the counter to see if this was where the registration desk was located. Sam immediately guessed that this guy might be an aristocrat, since he was acting so brazenly. The receptionist apologized and asked the impudent pudgy guy to get in line like all the other people. But the representative of the Almighty replied, How dare I say such a thing to him? In the next moment, Puffy went berserk and claimed to be the eldest son of Count Ranzigari Dorgan. And he's not going to stand in line with some commoners. Sam immediately realized that he wasn't mistaken, and that this was indeed a typical son from a rich family of aristocrats. The registrar explains that these are the rules, and they are for everyone. But the representative of the aristocrat family continued to resent the fact that some worthless registrar refused to follow his orders. He promised that as soon as he told all this to his father the Count, the receptionist would immediately go outside and never work for the guild again. The aristocrat demanded that the guy give his name. Sam tried to hold back from putting on such a pathetic show. He thought that of course he didn't know how the guild really treated the children of aristocrats. But it is obvious that this causes a lot of trouble. Still, unable to stand all this nonsense, Erica demanded that the impudent man stop insulting the guild employee. Sam was shocked because he hadn't expected this from her. Erica yelled at Pudgy that he was causing everyone problems and had already annoyed everyone with his nasty voice, and apparently he is so stupid that he does not know about the existence of the queue at all. Erica continued and asked how the son of an aristocrat could behave like this in the first place. Sam tried to calm the girl down, but was also sent to a very unpleasant place, after which he gave up trying to calm Erica down. Erica went over the top of her voice and yelled that she hated such spoiled brats the most. Puffy did not remain in debt and called Erica a disgusting fool. The impudent nobleman then said that as a commoner, her body wasn't bad at all. Erica demanded to stop staring at her and threatened to kill Pudgy. Suddenly, the son of an aristocrat challenged Erica to a duel. And Sam thought, what nonsense is going on? Puffy asked her if she was so bold that she was afraid to go up against him in a duel. After all, she herself began to insult and run into a fight. Erica, seething with hatred, went all the way to spots and exclaimed that she accepted the challenge to a duel. Sam tried to explain to Erica that she couldn't easily fall for such a provocation and go along with this impudent aristocrat. But Erica just snapped at Sam to shut up. Judging by the grin of satisfaction on the vile nobleman's face, Sam knew he was up to something. Then Pudgy switched to Sam and called him a bore. And if he is so worried about his mistress, then he is also called to a duel. Sam cursed the day he'd gone to the guild with Erica. He promised himself that he would never forget her bad temper. Erica wondered why there were three of them against the two of them and why it was so fair. But the plump nobleman just grinned and reminded Erica that she was the one who wanted the fight, and she had to know for herself and understand what she was doing. Puffy added that you can of course just run away if he was scared. Erica was furious and snapped that it couldn't be that she was afraid of anyone. Pudgy immediately took her at her word and asked her if she had any objections, and the girl exploded with anger, shouting that she would destroy everyone at once. 
Sam was in complete shock at how enraged Erica was and how out of control she was. The chubby aristocrat reminded him that since the duel was taking place in a guild, it would be considered official. In other words, the loser will be obliged to fulfill the winner's wish. They laughed maliciously, and Pudgy wished that if he won, the two of them would become his slaves forever. Sam immediately realized that the matter was dirty and tried to dissuade Erica, because this was not a condition, but a setup. But Erica yelled at her partner to open his mouth immediately, and she shouted to the plump aristocrat that they agreed to fight, and if he wants it that way, then she accepts such conditions. Sam thought that all these banal fights were a relic of some wild past. He reminded Erekai that not only was she involved, but he was also involved. But Erika didn't care, she was already hungry for a fight. Erika hissed that if they won, everything would be fine. The plump aristocrat was also exultant, he asked not to be offended by his opponents if they suddenly died. Sam decided that now that he was in this mess, he would have to try harder. It seemed strange to him that he couldn't sense anything from his opponents, and is this fat guy just looking so weak? After all, he is too self-confident. Erica shouted in the direction of the enemy so that he, too, would not regret later if he died. The fat aristocrat asked his accomplices if they knew what they should do and immediately received an approving answer. Sam suggested to Erica that she take cover behind him because he is younger and he will come forward and start the fight and then it will be clear how to act. But Erica said it wasn't the time for jokes. The second announced, in that case, if everyone is ready, you can start the adventurer's duel in the guild. Erica whispered to Sam to watch carefully as she smashed these scoundrels to smithereens. But suddenly, something swift hit Erica and sent her flying, and Sam only had time to shout what the hell was going on and rush to help. Sam asked Erica if she was okay, but she was deeply knocked out and only mumbled something unintelligible. Sam wondered how this could happen, since it was a violation of the rules. How dare they strike before the start of the match, and even in front of the referee himself, just some nonsense. The fat nobleman yelled in a nasty voice that this woman was now his slave after all, everyone saw how she lost. The judge still decided to intervene and pointed out that this was a violation of the rules. She tried to explain that this match wasn't considered a match that counted, but Dorgan told her to shut up. He started yelling like some guild woman might order him around, and how dare she doubt his victory. Sam asked him if he had planned this from the beginning because it was a mean thing to do, that, but the fat representative of the aristocrats replied, since he is an aristocrat, then he sets the rules here. How could he possibly afford to fight a commoner on equal terms? Dorgan, pleased with himself, ordered Sam to scram off and head back to his house. But an old feeling came over Sam that he hadn't felt in a long time and had always tried to hold back. Chubby, happy with his success, asked Sam what he was mumbling, because it was time to get out of here. But suddenly, the aristocrat's fun stopped, and he screamed in pain. The three of them screamed in horror as a hand grew out of the ground. Sam immediately ordered the golem to crush them all. The plump nobleman yelled to be released immediately. Dorgan immediately remembered the rules and said it was mean, but Sam promised to put the words back in his mouth right now. Sam clenched his hand, and with it the stone fist, and there was a heart-rending scream, which then turned into a crunch. Sam loosened his grip a little and asked the nobleman if he chose to give up and become a slave or be crushed by this hand. The chubby aristocrat asked Sam to stop joking, because how can he become someone's slave? But the referee did not stay away from what is happening and reminded that this is an official match. Dorgan screamed how this was even possible and he wouldn't give up on anyone. Sam said it was time to die then. As soon as the hand started to clench, the plump noble begged for mercy and begged not to be killed. The hand tightened even more and Dorgan couldn't stand it anymore. He exclaimed that he was admitting defeat and giving up. The judge immediately announced that Samuel Shate was recognized as the winner. Sam asked Erica how she was feeling. And as soon as she opened her eyes, Sam said, thank God she's alive. 
The girl immediately asked how things were going with their match and whether they managed to win. Sam proudly said that he had taught the brutes a lesson which pleased Erica. It occurred to Sam that they didn't really pose much of a threat. Erica asked what happened next to those aristocrats, and Sam told them how he had handed the three men over to the first slaver he came across. Erica couldn't hide her surprise and thanked Sam. Then she apologized to Sam. But Sam said he didn't need to apologize and he wanted to. After a moment's thought, Erica admitted that she was actually jealous of Sam. She explained that she was hurt and really didn't want to admit to Sam that Urshate had chosen him as her heir over her. Erica said that she now understands how badly she behaved and she is very sorry for it. Sam replied that it didn't bother him at all and he didn't even think to take offense at her. But Erica said it bothered her. After all, because of her bad temper, she just got into this stupid duel with those idiotic aristocrats, and she made a terrible impression on herself. Almost crying, Erica confessed that she was really pathetic. Erica said that when her older sister died, and when she found out that Sam had inherited her entire identity, she lost her purpose in that moment. Then she knew. Better than to be angry about it. But she still acted like it was all Sam's fault. Sam replied that there was nothing strange about her behavior because she had lost a dear family member and therefore succumbed to emotions. Erica said that Sam also lost an important person for himself and a loved one. Sam confessed that this was indeed true and that Urshate was the most important person in the world to him, and she was the one he loved the most. Erica said that since that was the case, Sam shouldn't comfort her because she'd done a terrible thing to someone who was no better off than she was. And now Sam is also a member of her family, who, along with everyone else, shares the same pain. Sam tried to comfort her, telling her that everything was going to be fine and that he just needed to get through this moment. Sam looked at Erica sobbing and remembered his favorite teacher and thought that everyone really loved her. After all this, after resting for a while, they went back together. Erica said they would be home soon. Sam guessed that his father would probably be very angry with them. Erica smiled and agreed. Then she thanked Sam for today and once again apologized for her behavior. Sam asked me to finally stop apologizing and forget about the problems. Erica agreed, but immediately apologized again for something. She said that since Sam is now a member of their family, everything will be different. Erica suggested that when they had some free time, they talk to Urshate's older sister again. Sam said that he would be happy to talk about her and answer all Erica's questions. When Lisa saw Sam, she suggested that they go for a walk together. Sam asked her why she suddenly wanted to go out, where they were going. Lies solemnly announced that they were going hunting and they would also train to survive in all sorts of conditions. Tired and exhausted, Sam stared at the campfire and wondered why it was necessary to set up this camp for the night in the first place. After all, Lisa herself said that the woods would not return home that day. Sam offered her a fork and knife, but Lies replied that he didn't understand anything and eating with his hands was much better. Sam thought it was all very strange. After all, as soon as Lies suggested that he go hunting, her mood oddly improved you could say that she became quite excited. Lisa admitted that it's still good that Sam is so good at cooking because it's useful on hikes. Sam replied that he hadn't really prepared anything special. As for himself, he recalled how he had lived alone in his previous life, so he learned how to cook. Lies said that she wasn't very good at it herself, but that didn't mean she couldn't cook anything at all, so only the simplest and a little bit. Lies asked that there must be an older sister, or Shate, who also didn't know how to cook anything. Sam admitted that this was indeed the case, and that his teacher was a very careless person. Lisa hesitated, then said that she had an important conversation to discuss. Sam asked her what she wanted to talk to him about. Lisa confessed that she knew a lot about Sam's past from her older sister's letter. Sam reminded him that there was nothing interesting or surprising about his past, but Lies said that wasn't the case at all. Lisa said that even though she knows almost everything about Sam, 
Sam doesn't know anything about her, which makes her feel unfair. And such a circumstance is completely unfair to Sam. Lisa explained that she really wanted Sam to get to know her better. And that's why she organized and asked me to go with her on this hike. Lies said that she wanted to say right away that this would not be the most pleasant conversation. Then she asked if Sam would listen to her. Sam replied that he would be happy to listen to her if she wanted to. A little embarrassed, Lies admitted that the thing is that she was married before. Lisa said that Sam might not be comfortable listening to this, but she wanted him to listen to the rest of it. The girl said that three years ago she was married, but for six months she never managed to get pregnant, and because of this, her mother constantly reproached her. Sam reminded him that in such cases, usually both partners are responsible and the blame should not have been solely on Lisa. And in general, it is not so easy to set off a child in six months. And there is nothing surprising in the fact that then nothing happened. Lies replied that alas, her husband did not think so. And at the beginning of their marriage, she believed that he was a kind man. Well, as soon as they managed to have a child, he changed dramatically. He began to lock her in the room and not let her pick up the sword and sometimes even lifted it to her hand. As a result, he made her completely guilty of everything and even took a mistress. Sam wondered how she'd gotten involved with such a scumbag. Lisa confessed that in her 21 years of life, she had never experienced such bitterness and resentment. I couldn't understand how it was possible to force a girl to take on such a responsibility. Although this is normal in this world, it is still very disgusting. Lies continued her story and told her that eventually her father and mother sensed something was wrong, and after that they began to visit her, and then they found out about everything from her words. Then there was a huge scandal that led to a divorce. Sam said that in his opinion, Lisa had a terrible brother, and it was even very good that it ended. Lies admitted that she herself is happy about this. Sam suggested that since they had already cut off all ties with this man, Lisa should now live as she wanted. And in the future, she may meet a beautiful man, fall in love and marry, and then they will live happily ever after and have lots of children. Sam immediately remembered his favorite sorceress because he had just said the very words she had said. He thought that at that moment he didn't understand why she was talking about it, but now he understands everything. After all, it is normal to wish such a thing to a person who is not indifferent. Lies thanked Sam for his kind words and good wishes. Sam asked her why she was thanking him for something so obvious when he hadn't really said anything strange. Lisa said that maybe Sam was in a bad mood because of this. Sam admitted that the mood really turned sour. After all, all this time, while she was being treated so cruelly and unfairly, he was having fun somewhere without even knowing that this was happening to her. And if he and Urshate had found out about this earlier, they would have come running to her right away to explain to her husband how to behave. And even now, I still want to find him and punish him for everything. Lies replied that she was really pleased to hear this, but it might cause unnecessary problems in the family. So she would just thank the kind Sam for saying that. Sam said it was obvious. Then Sam paused and considered how best to tell Lisa that she was a pretty girl. But Lisa understood everything without words and confessed that Sam was making her blush. She rushed to Sam and called him a very nice man. Sam had asked her not to snuggle up so much, but at the same time, he could smell her sweet and pleasant scent. Lisa, overcome with emotion, said that she understood what it was like to have a student. Sam, growing more and more embarrassed, asked her not to snuggle up so much. But Lies explained that her teacher, the Holy Swordsman, was also kind to the students despite his strictness. Now she understands his feelings, which he showed to all the students. Lisa admitted that educating people is a great feeling. Lisa explained that meeting Sam had given her another chance to pick up the sword and that she should say thank you again. Sam thought that she was finally cheering up because after all, a smile really suits her and he doesn't want her to be sad anymore. Vidya, she deserves to be so happy that she can forget about her unhappy past. That's why he wants it from the bottom of his heart. Erica walked down the hall and was indignant 
because her parents didn't have to be so angry with her. And if Sam hadn't been there, she wouldn't have gotten away with just cutting down on her pocket money. She remembered how she had been rebuked and assumed that Viscount Ranziguri had contacted her parents after the incident at the Guild. After all, when he found out that his son and his servants had become ordinary slaves, he began to strongly protest and resent. Of course, her parents didn't get involved in all this nonsense. After all, that Viscount's family is a hostile faction. In addition, thanks to the Guild's witness statements, the complaint was completely rejected. And rumor has it that the Viscount ended up buying his son and servants from a slave trader for double the price. Erica wondered what might have happened during such an accident if Sam hadn't been there. She remembered that after lunch, it was Sam's time to practice with her. But she was distracted from her thoughts by a voice from behind greeting her. Erica whirled around and asked Gunther why he was here. But all Gunther said was that you shouldn't be so rude to your older brother. Erica reminded him that it was all his own idea, as if they were brother and sister. And personally, she doesn't remember the moment when they officially became relatives. Gunther reminded him that they had known each other since childhood, so this attitude was quite normal. He's also going to marry her older sister, which will make them even closer in their relationship. And whether she wants to or not, but they will still become brother and sister. Erica asked if he didn't know yet. Gunther asked him what he didn't know and what he'd already missed. Erica revealed that Urshate's older sister had passed away. But Gunther just waved it off and said that he had heard the absurdity. Erica asked what that meant. Gunther explained that he had personally heard that there was a certain scoundrel who used this lie to ingratiate himself into the family. Gunther said that as far as he knew, the man's name was Sam, and he also pretended to be a disciple of Urshate. Erica was outraged that it wasn't all a lie and the older sister really died, and they were convinced of this. Gunther went on to explain that he had heard the imposter foolishly use their family's famous magic, and the man himself is a very interesting person. Erica said that Sam is the only successor who was raised by her older sister, so there is no need to speak ill of him. Gunther admitted that he was very surprised because he expected that Erica herself would be against him. After all, she, like no one else, aspired to become the successor of her sister. Erica explained that she really denied everything and was jealous of Sam, but he proved that he was worthy to be the heir of Urshate. Also, two weeks have passed since the death of my older sister, and Gunther should have come running as soon as he found out. But in reality, I'm stuck somewhere. Gunther explained that he was so overwhelmed by the sad news that he immediately fainted and only woke up this morning. After all, this was difficult to accept and the brain apparently turned off from stress. Gunther exclaimed that it didn't matter and that everyone was wrong because Urshate couldn't have died, and he was so stupid that he even believed it for a little while. Gunther asked where his favorite girl was because it was time for them to meet. Erica tried again to explain to him that it wasn't all fiction and that her older sister had really died. And there was even a funeral quite a long time ago. Gunther replied that since everyone was so sure they were right, then he wanted to meet this Sam. If he really accepted everything from Urshate, then it is necessary to find out in person. Erica asked me not to do anything stupid, but Gunther said he had a personal interest in the guy. And if even Erica has a positive attitude towards him, then this is all very interesting. Gunther confessed that he had originally planned to tear that guy to pieces, but after seeing Erica, he decided to change his plans. Gunther asked the girl to take him to Sam immediately. But Erica said how could she let a nutcase like Gunther meet Sam so easily? Gunther said that if Sam really was the great sorceress's receiver, then he would want to see her. After all, he had to meet his teacher's husband. Training in the forest with Lisa was going well. The girl suggested that we take a break for rest. Lies praised Sam for being much stronger than he was before. The only thing that caused her regret was Sam's inability to wield a sword. Sam laughed and promised that as soon as he mastered the art of swordsmanship, he would then immediately start perfecting his magical path. 
Lies asked if a magic apprentice didn't sound cool and she even liked it very much. Sam agreed that it sounded interesting. And Lies giggled and confessed that it was the first time for her to train a boy. Sam reminded him that he should strive for the position of a court magician and therefore he should first achieve success as a magician. Lies agreed and explained that the highest ranking magicians in the country receive a special status as court magicians. Sam said that he knew Urshate was a court magician before she left this country, so he would also like to achieve this goal. Lisa was reminded that to do this, you need to win the tournament, which will be held in three months. Sam confirmed that it will be very important to win there. Lies explained that they had three magic tournaments a year in the country. And if Sam shows his incredible abilities there, then most likely he will be noticed. After all, the fastest way is to ask for recommendations from other court magicians. Lies said that she personally knows a certain court magician, but there is a small problem related to him. Gunther, who suddenly appeared, immediately added to the conversation and said that there were absolutely no problems. Lies was surprised by Gunther's sudden appearance and she smiled, not quite sincerely. Erica slapped Sam on the shoulder and he complained about her stupid joke. Sam noticed that he had a very hostile aura coming from a strange guy, which was like a blazing fire. Gunther broke the awkward pause and asked what it meant that this was the same Samuel. Then Gunther started yelling that he couldn't believe it, and his behavior scared Sam a little. But Erica intervened and ordered Gunther to shut up immediately, as everyone was tired of him screeching. Sam thought that he didn't understand how he was going to affect this guy, that he was mad. But Erica advised Sam not to worry and not to pay attention to this freak. Gunther growled angrily and claimed that he could actually feel the magic of Urshate emanating from Sam, and now he understands that the truth is dead. Sam thought that this guy was really strange because even he himself still can't really feel the power of his teacher in him. In the end, Gunther calmed down and apologized for not even having time to introduce himself. He said his name was Gunther Ignatz, and Urshate was his fiance. Sam was surprised by this information, but Lisa explained that Gunther had made it up himself. Lies added that this deranged self-proclaimed fiancé. Gunther claimed that Urshate was indeed his fiancé. But Erica was an idiot and reminded him that Urshate herself wasn't happy with him. Gunther replied that it wasn't like that and Urshate was just a shy girl. Lies apologized to Sam and told him that Gunther was always like this. Sam looked at the boy's emotions and decided that it was much more than just liking him. Lies agreed and told how many times he confessed his feelings to his older sister, but each time she rejected him. And Gunther was getting more and more insistent. As a result, it became like stalking. He literally raved about Urshate. Gunther always comes to their house just because everyone is on friendly terms with me. And once he even looked around his older sister's room, for some unknown reason. Lisa confessed that she doesn't even remember how many times she and Erica kicked him out of the house for his stupid behavior. Gunther asked Lisa not to talk about him like that because Sam might misunderstand, but Lisa was reminded that everything she said was true. Lies decided to get rid of Gunther's presence and said that if there were no plans in this house, then he could get out of there as soon as possible. But Gunther said his business wasn't finished yet, so he was staying. He still wants to talk to Sam. Gunther said that Erlite's death was a huge loss for everyone, and that Sam had inherited all of her power and succeeded her. He's Gunther, and he wants to marry Samuel. Sam froze at the turn of events, and the girls yelled at him what the hell he was talking about, because Sam was a guy. But Gunther said he didn't think Sam was a girl at all. He said that he was completely clear-headed, and even if his words are strange, he does not refuse them. Gunther said that he accepted the fact that Urshate had left everyone and gone to the other world. Well, if he was facing a man who had inherited everything from her, it means that he has every right to take him as his wife. Gunther begged Sam to get married quickly. But Sam didn't even know how to answer him correctly and just thought, this guy is really crazy. 
Gunther began to wheeze in pain, and Sam asked what was wrong with him. Gunther apologized and said he had a chronic medical condition. Gunther claimed that only Earthshade could heal him, and he'd really been infatuated with her since the day they'd met as kids, and his only goal was to become her husband, and so he was constantly improving as a mage, and to stand on a par with her and even kicked out his inept brother and became the next head of the Count's family. And now she was dead, leaving him completely alone with no purpose in life. Erica said it was her older sister's underwear and the bastard stole it. Sam thought the whole thing looked disgusting. Gunther asked if Sam didn't want to be his wife, and if that's the case, then he's a bad boy. Sam thought that if he didn't do something, his chastity would be compromised. Sam asked the sisters if they couldn't stop this madman. Lies replied that she really wanted to do it, but this guy was too strong to resist. After all, Gunther is a court magician of the fifth rank. Gunther said that it would be better to call his future chosen one simply Sam, but Sam told me not to. Gunther said what he knew was that Sam wanted to be a court magician. Sam asked if that was a problem for anyone. Gunther explained that he could recommend Sam for one of the court mage jobs. However, to do this, Sam must show what he is capable of. Gunther suggested that Sam fight him and it would be a good challenge. Gunther explained that he intended to support his wife, but still wanted to see if Sam could beat him, using the power he had inherited from Urshate, and at the same time show all their magical talents. Sam thought this guy was just a freak to me, and he was a real nut. Gunther promised that if Sam, who had inherited the power of the old sorceress, showed off his magic power badly, he would kill him. Lisa and Erica advised Sam not to go along with this idiot because there are other ways to prove yourself. But Sam said it would be all right, and he was ready. My son said that he was proud to be a disciple of the great Urshate, and that it was also a great opportunity to learn how powerful the court magicians were. Sam stated that he accepts this challenge and is ready to fight. Gunther asked Sam to do his best to entertain him. Gunther asked if Sam was ready, and Sam said he was ready to start at any time. Gunther said that then there was no time to waste and created a spell. Sam said it was barrier magic, and Gunther said it was. Gunther boasted that he was a master of barrier spells, and so far, no one has been able to break its shields except Urshate. Sam replied that if he did, he would be the second person to do it. Gunther praised her for her confidence and bold statement. Gunther explained that all he could do was put up a barrier since he wasn't really into rough fights. Sam said it was very elegant of him. Gunther has promised that he will count Sam's victory if he manages to break through his defense, but he is not going to feel sorry for Sam and somehow give in. Sam replied that they would soon find out how long Gunther could hold out. And is he really such a serious magician? Sam decided to notice the speed and be one step ahead. Gunther praised him for his speed, but explained that it wasn't enough to prevent him from reacting to Sam's attack. And even if that could happen, the barrier protecting him wouldn't allow any damage to be dealt to him. Gunther said it didn't matter how fast Sam moved. After all, as long as he was inside the protective barrier, no one would be able to touch him. But Sam decided it wouldn't be a problem to destroy the nutcase. Gunther said that Sam's behavior was very bad. Although the speed and strength are really impressive. Sam advised Gunther not to relax because he only managed to stop one blow. Sam realized that they were both on the ground now, but most likely earth magic would be useless right now. Therefore, we need to look for another solution. Sam summoned the flame and Gunther just smiled, seeing no threat. Gunther confessed that he had never seen anything like it, and this body strengthening magic together with the flame strengthening magic is really impressive. Sam decided that if his teacher could break through that barrier, then she could too. Gunther noticed that Sam was using combat attacks and realized that Lies had taught Sam how to use them. Gunther decided that the combination of blows and fire attacks combined could increase the damage tenfold. Gunther confidently stated that even this would not allow the price to break through his defense. 
Sam admitted after a moment that his entire attack had actually gone without effect. Sam thought it would be harder than he thought, although it's too early to panic and he still has to win and break through the defensive one. Barrier. Sam, thinking that he had a chance, put all his strength into his fist and tried to break through the protective barrier. Gunther praised Sam for having such an excellent ability to concentrate all his power into one point and also for being able to wield such a huge amount of magic. But all this is not enough to break through his protective barrier. He decided that it was impossible to stop and continued to beat. Gunther yelled that Sam was an idiot, and Sam promised that he would win. Gunther started acting weird again and shouted that his barrier wasn't completely broken. Gunther admitted that Sam had the same approach to battle as Urshate, who never gave up. After all, even seemingly simple magic can become a serious threat if you have great magical power. Gunther explained to me that he hadn't shown all the power he was capable of. Then Gunther admitted that he had really underestimated Sam. He promised that from now on, he would make his barrier as strong as possible. And so Sam has to try very hard and give his all in this battle. Sam promised that he would and then asked if Gunther's courtyard was well protected. Sam explained that he didn't want anything to happen to the family. Gunther laughed and said that now he understood why Sam wasn't giving it his all. Gunther asked Sam not to worry because his barriers protecting this place are his best work, designed for serious battles with Urshate. Gunther assured Sam that he would not be able to destroy them as he had just inherited the power of the great sorceress. Gunther urged him to start and said that he really hoped Sam would jump into his chest with all his strength. Sam replied that he would definitely try to do it and give it his all. Seeing Sam concentrate his power, Gunther said it was fine. Sam decided to put all his strength into the punch, as if he was putting his life on the line. Sam shouted that this was his mentor's best technique and that Gunther was going to learn it firsthand. Sam ordered the flames to pierce through Gunther's defensive barrier. Gunther felt the incredible impact and realized that it was a pure direct attack of concentrated flame, and this is only possible for someone who has great magical power. After all, this is actually a high-density magic fire bombardment. But Sam shouted that this was not all because no one said that there would be only one attack. Gunther yelled that Sam didn't think he was as good a wizard as Urshate, but Sam offered to let Gunther see for himself. Sam asked if Gunther was now confident that he could hold on to his barrier without causing any damage to others. Gunther only had time to shout before a huge force slammed into his shields. Looking at all this, Lisa confessed that she couldn't believe her eyes, and how is it possible that Sam is capable of such a powerful attack? Then she wondered where Gunther himself had gone. Lies realized that his shields were in tatters and called for a healer. Lies realized that Gunther's position did not allow him to stage such violent battles. Gunther was unharmed and apologized for the general disturbance. Gunther said he was fine. I asked Sam why he was naked. Gunther explained that his clothes were covered with protective charms and they reflected the damage, but the suit fell apart. Sam reminded him that now Gunther had to keep his promise and take back their stupid idea that they were meant to be married. Gunther admitted that, unfortunately, there was nothing he could do. After all, the duty of the loser is to obey the winner. Gunther swore that he would never ask Sam to marry him again. And then, to everyone's surprise, Gunther yelled that he wanted to be Sam's wife. Sam was so taken aback by Gunther's idiocy that he didn't even know what to say. Gunther said that now he only sees Sam as a man, not a woman. He promised that he would love Sam with all his heart and never betray their love. Sam screamed in horror when he would be able to live in peace and without such problems. Lisa said that she needed to get rid of Gunther before he had a chance to have a bad effect on Sam. Lies asked why Erica looked so excited and if it was because of Sam's victory. Erica replied that she seems to have found someone to be inspired by in the future. Jones Walker said that there was probably a real riot going on here. The Manor Master explained that as a true magician, he couldn't just sit still after feeling such magical power. 
It was actually a good thing that the two of them hadn't managed to destroy his house, because there was so much magic power that he hadn't even imagined that his eldest daughter had such power. Lisa agreed with her father and admitted that she had also underestimated Sam before. Jones Walker said that it was his idea to keep Sam under control in the magic army until he mastered his abilities. But now it was clear that his magic power exceeded everyone's expectations. And that kind of magic power is more than enough for the position of a court magician. Jones Walker said that following Gunther, he would also provide his recommendations. Lisa replied that Sam would be very grateful for such support on the way to his goal. But his father reminded him that all this was not enough yet, because of course it was stupid to judge by age, but Sam was still a minor. And this is unusual for a court magician, so many people will be against it. Lies agreed with her father's comment and asked if the commander of the magic army could help in this matter and leave his recommendations. Jones Walker promised to ask Delight Shinator to do him that favor. Lies asked her father if he would dare to ask his sister for help. But my father reminded me that his sister was the mentor of Urshait and also the one who had been removed from her position as a court magician. But at the same time it is very strong and its strength is recognized by everyone. Lies asked if her father was sure of his decision since Mrs. The Delight was not a simple person. But my father said that he understood all the difficulties of this case perfectly. And he wants to try it even if it's risky. After all, he personally has complete confidence in Sam. Lies also decided that Sam could handle everything because he is a student of the great sorceress and their sister. Although Miss Delight may not act predictably, Jones Walker told Sam that he wanted to recommend him for the position of court magician. The Lord of the Manor said that Sam's magic was strong enough to break Gunther's protective barrier, and it's even stronger than he expected. Sam thanked Jones Walker for such a high assessment of his abilities. The head of the family apologized, because in fact he underestimated Sam. But Sam asked me not to apologize and to raise my head. Jones Walker said he thought he knew what Sam was capable of, but it turned out to be a blind man's mistake so he feels shame. But Sam admitted that he himself believes that he still lacks enough experience, so there is no need to apologize to him. The head of the family promised that he would definitely recommend Sam to the commission. Sam asked if Gunther was going to suggest him as a candidate too. Jones Walker says they will both recommend Sam, but they still need support. Sam asked them what kind of support they wanted. The owner of the estate explained that Sam's potential is not in doubt, but there is a problem in his age. So Sam needs to meet someone else, and if all goes well, then there won't be any problems. Jones Walker asked if Urshate had ever mentioned the name Master Delight Sinatra. Sam said he didn't remember the name. And Jones Walker said that means his daughter didn't say anything about her. Sam asked who Master Delight was and why it was so important to meet him. The head of the family explained that he was Urshate's mentor and a former court magician of the second rank, and he was once known as the strongest mage in the kingdom. Sam said, so mentor Urshate was the strongest man in the kingdom. Jones Walker replied that this was in the past, but a few years ago he was defeated and ousted from his post by Albert Freud. Sam asked what it meant now that Albert Fredgem was the most powerful mage in the entire kingdom. After all, he believed that Urshate was the strongest, but Jones Walker confirmed that Urshate was much stronger. It was just that she didn't like Albert and the position of court magician didn't seem to interest her very much. Sam asked him if he understood that Jones didn't like Albert Fragem either. The Lord of the Manor replied that this was indeed the case. He explained that Albert was an aristocrat from a rival faction, and he has a nasty habit of bullying the weak. He uses his position as a court magician to further his personal goals, and that's why he hates it. Sam said he probably wouldn't like the man either. Sam asked if he would become the strongest man in the kingdom if he defeated Albert. Jones Walker replied that in fact it should be so, but it is unlikely that Albert himself will fight. Sam asked if even the strongest court mage wasn't the most powerful. 
Jones Walker replied that this was true, and first place goes to Lady Magnolia, and she's a healer mage, but it is not worth fighting because it is a losing cause in advance. Jones Walker asked if Sam wasn't going to fight Magnolia after all, and the guy promised that he wouldn't get into a fight for no reason. Jones said he was fine, but Sam was always getting into trouble, like with Gunther a couple of days ago. But Sam just laughed and explained that he was actually the victim. Gunther had asked him to marry her, and Sam has been trying to get rid of Gunther's attention lately. And Gunther even takes advantage of his brazen bathroom, in which, by the way, Urshate herself washed. Jones Walker, seeing Gunther in his dressing gown, said that they were probably going too far off topic. Chapter 7 told Gunther that he wanted Master Delight to recommend Sam for the position of court magician. Gunther replied that it was a great idea and that Sam really should meet Master Delight. After all, this will certainly be a useful experience for him, but he's not currently serving as a court magician. Jones Walker replied that he understood, but Master Delight's influence was still strong. Gunther suddenly declared that he had talked too much and ignored his husband, to which Sam once again asked him not to call him that. Gunther confirmed that Master Delight was a great magician, and in his prime, he would be able to break through his best barrier. Sam asked what it meant to be in the prime of life, and if it was getting harder to fight as he got older. Gunther said he wasn't that old. It's just that ever since he was stripped of his position as a court magician, he started washing down his grief with alcohol and eventually lost his former form. Lies advised Gunther to be more tactful in his words. Luther explained that Master Delai subsequently drank more and more and eventually stopped using magic, and now his daughter Francesco is looking after him. Jones Walker said he used to have a lot of students, but now he doesn't have any. Gunther added that Master Delight was very difficult, but not a bad person, and he always had a passion for magic. Then Lisa told how after those events, he began to resort to alcohol, and now there is no trace of the person he was before. His only remaining student was Urshate. Jones Walker told Sam that now that he had heard the whole story himself, he had to decide whether to meet Master Delight. And be that as it may, if there is no desire, then you should not force yourself. Sam asked if it would really be useful. The owner of the family admitted that he hopes that this meeting will lead to some changes in Sam. The son said that he understood everything, but still wanted to see his mentor Urshade. Jones Walker thanked Sam for his determination and promised to organize the trip. Before leaving, Lies informed Sam that she had a request to make. Sam replied that he would certainly comply with her request because he also owed her a favor. Lies replied that she was glad of his responsiveness, but still he should not tell a woman that he was ready to do anything for her. After all, this can lead to irreparable consequences. Lisa says she has a serious request to make about Miss Delight. Lisa was told that Master Delight's daughter Francesca was a friend of hers, and Francesca still hopes for Master Delight's return to normal. Sam promised that he would do everything possible to help in this difficult matter. Lies replied that she would hope for his help and was grateful for his responsiveness. Sam was embarrassed by Lisa's embrace, and she said he was so cute that she couldn't help herself. Sam admitted that the way she calls him cute is very disturbing. Lies agreed and admitted that it was a bit silly to call a man that, at parting, Sam promised that he would try very hard for Lisa and her friend. As soon as Sam got into the carriage, New thought that he would only be gone for a few days and he was already feeling very lonely. Sam was greeted at the Sinatra estate by a beautiful girl and he immediately noticed her appearance. Sam apologized for the sudden visit. But Francesca said they already knew Sam was coming, and then she suggested they go inside. Francesca said that she knew Sam was a disciple of her shade, and that her father would be happy about it. Then the girl explained that she was the daughter of the Lord of the Manor, and could be called simply Fran. Sam agreed and thanked them for their hospitality. The son asked if Fran was really a countess. The girl replied that of course it is, but asked her not to call on you. Fran said she wanted to see Sam back to her father as soon as possible.
The girl then explained that she was sorry if she made Sam feel uncomfortable about her father. Sam said that he understood everything and that he would be fine. The girl said that her father began to drink even more alcohol after the news of Urshate's death. Sam replied that he understood Fran's condition and sympathized with her, because such a problem adversely affects a person. Fran admitted that she personally considers this a sign of weakness. She explained that even Sam, who was actually a young boy, was able to come to terms with the death of his mentor. Therefore, she is doubly ashamed of her father. Sam replied that he still had a lot of memories of his teacher. Fran said Sam was a nice guy and then apologized for ruffling his hair. But he replied that there was nothing wrong with it and he didn't even mind. Fran explained that she was an only child and had always wanted a younger brother who would be just like Sam. Sam replied that he personally would be happy to have a sister like her. Sam was surprised at how many places there were to study magic. Fran said that her father used to have a lot of students, but now it's all useless. Sam asked if it was because Albert had stripped him of his rank of strongest and removed him from his position as a court magician. But Fran explained that this was not entirely true. It was indeed true that Albert had stripped him of the title of the strongest. But my father voluntarily gave up his position as a court magician. He couldn't bear to suffer a shameful defeat in front of his majesty, and it might have been different if Albert had been a decent man. Well, he's a coward, a bully, and a scumbag who likes to bully the weak. As a result, the father could not accept that he was defeated by such a person. And now Albert sometimes comes to their house to make fun of his father. And one day he asked her to be his wife. I just wanted to have fun though. Fran apologized for such details. But Sam said he understood and that he'd met some mean people too. The girl asked Sam not to mention Albert in front of his father and pointed to his room. Fran told her father that Poe had a visitor and that he was a disciple of Lady Urshate. The girl immediately apologized for her father's condition because she hoped that he did not drink. But Sam said it was all right, and then he introduced himself to the master and called himself a disciple of the great sorceress. Master Delight replied that Sam was still a child. Sam replied that he was indeed underage, but his skills were already honed. The master said it was very noble of Sam to introduce himself to a fallen man, but it was unlikely to be of much use. Fran explained to her father that Sam had come to them in the hope of getting his recommendation for the position of court magician. Master Delight looked surprised and asked in a more even voice what it was all about. Then he asked me not to make him laugh because court magic is not as simple as it might seem to an ordinary child. Sam explained that the position of court magician was just an intermediate stage for him. After all, he is a disciple of Urshate and strives to become the strongest in the world in the future. The master stated how dare Sam call himself the strongest in his presence. But Fran immediately confirmed that Sam is really very strong because he managed to break the barrier of Gunther. The master asked if this was really true, and Sam confirmed that it was. The master considered, then asked if Sam was really that confident in his abilities. The boy replied that his teacher, Urshate, had taught him well. The master offered to see what he was really capable of and find out the source of his courage. The master promised that if Sam only used boring magic, he would kill him for it. Sam promised that he would fight with pleasure and try to surprise with something unusual. Sam decided that this was a great opportunity to find out how effective his magic was against this man.